Right, so can everyone see the screen, by the way? Yep. Okay, just to be clear, because my screen's a bit funny. Um, right, so we're, today we're going to cover DNO intakes. Um, the reason we're covering DNO intakes is, as you'll see today, too many of them. Uh, we go into too many installations and we are trying to spend a lot of time figuring out what the supply configuration is. Now, I'm going to put my hand up and say 20 years ago, when I was doing it every single day, it was very simple to spot a TNCS, a TNS, and a T, well, TTs, you had to find mm. the rod, but it was pretty simple to identify a supply type. Now, it would appear that it's getting far more difficult, and we're getting lots of weird, funny configurations. And um, Yeah, and I think fundamentally, the same three <clears throat> pictures have always been represented of these yes. earthing systems for over 20 years now. It's just been a re-edit of the same three illustrations, and sometimes they just don't look like that anymore. So what we're going to do today is we can't solve every single person's problem for them in this webinar. And for anyone watching on YouTube, this is more about a, 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 a recording of what the engagement with everybody is, but more importantly, where to go away and start researching your, yourself. So Dave Betteridge is going to be salivating at this um, <laughs> because there's a lot of knowledge in here. We're going to give you access to it where you can publicly go and find it. Read for yourself so we can continue this debate because there is going to be a part two to this. And the part two is when we're really, really going to commit career suicide for some of us. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, can Trust I just, me, this yeah, is where it ends up. This, 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 no more after that. Uh, can I yeah. just say, um, some of these documents, are they publicly freely available? Oh, yes, they are. Can you some highlight that not. when you find them? Because some you've got that you've got in your subscription. And can yes. we just emphasize which ones we can go and get for free so the guys can actually do well, that? Well, I've, I've actually screenshotted it so you can just I screenshot think. this. So... Awesome. Um, right, let's go in. So for everyone who's watching, um, whether you're 20, 30 years in, um, doesn't really matter. We all know these codes and they cause a lot of confusion. Now, um, the Code Breaker book, one of the things I like about the Code Breaker book is, um, and this is not an advert for it, even though my name's in it. Um, this actually does have codes for the DNO intakes. And why not? The DNO intake um, is uh, most certainly... Uh, something that we need to inspect because it's in the schedule of items inspected. Hmm. It's imperative for the applied safety measure, is it not? We do a ZE test. We do a PFC test. We make sure there's sufficient energy that, that is generated from the external earthing to uh, trip um, circuit breakers. And obviously we look at the intake, the origin, the earthing, so that we can effectively have um, earthic potential bonding and all that good stuff. Yeah. So it's imperative. Now, in the wiring regulations, I think it's 1110. Uh, it says the DNO equipment is exempt. Um, I, I think that's total rubbish. And if you had a chat with a lawyer, um, a lawyer would probably say, well, if you're relying on something that's exempt from the wiring rigs for the safety of your protective measure and you're inspecting it and signing off as part of your installation in safe, is it actually exempt? Again, it's an opinion. I will say mm. this, it's an informed opinion because I've had these discussions with lawyers, uh, yeah. which was quite awkward. I think, I think le legacy of training has always kind of, especially especially in testing training, has always kind of highlighted, you know, supply characteristics are measured and inspected, but we have that point where we have consumer installation on the load of the meter, and then we have the supply intake, and obviously 7671 ESQCR, separate standards. And so a lot of guys are trained under the opinion that the meter itself has got nothing to do with them to observe. Mm -hmm. And it's only in recent editions of BS76 and where the condition of this agreement has started to become, you know, instructed. So from a legislation perspective, most of us know the book on the left, uh, Wine Regulations, it's a guidance note. Um, compliance of it is presumed to be compliance of electricity work regulations or the various clauses within the AWR. The AWR itself is a secondary piece of legislation which sits under the Health and Safety at Work Act. There is also these regulations on the right, which is the, uh, has anybody ever come up with a decent nickname for them? Uh, I, just call it ESQ, I just call it ESQCR, and then it rolls off the tongues. I've said it so many bloody times. ESQCR. Um, so yeah, the Electrical Safety Quality Continuity Regs 2002, um, they have actually been amended in 2005 or nine. Um, and if you go online, this is a screenshot of the online copy from about 25 minutes ago. That's, that's literally when I screenshotted it and put it in here. Um, henceforth we're a little bit late um, so this is the highest piece of legislation for those dnos in the land 
and hang on let me just from my screen because it's annoying me um yeah so this is the highest piece of legislation in the land and all it does is it confuses people because that regulation 1110 says that everything that's under there is exempt uh, i would i really would argue um that maybe that approach is going to have to change something um, has and, to and and the argument i'm going to put forward is is if we are becoming prosumers and if we are potentially going to introduce foundation earth electrodes or, or other devices and look at opens and all this other technology we are slowly merging i mean i was speaking to a chap in the dno the other day and we know the dnos are looking at whether the, some of the ev technology out there actually complies with the intent of this uh, which will be another webinar which we do on evs at some point when we actually get an answer from them um for this uh, um webinar i have spent the last is it fed say last two months talking to the dnos mm -hmm. the ones that do want to talk some of them have slammed the door in my face that's fine um that's the beauty of research you can go and speak as you find so um again like with the wine regulations and any of the former um webinars we've done on domestic commercial or industrial which are available on e5 and spark and ninjas youtube there is the regulations Everybody gets scared, everybody argues over a code, but I thought I'd remind people here, um, there is a lot of advice given out by our industry of issue a danger notification to the duty holder, the person ordering the work. But we all know, and, and most conscious sparks know that that person ordering the work, that homeowner, if it's domestic, they haven't got a clue. They don't know what to say. And then as a spark, you end up sitting in the house on the phone to the DNO. Can you get round here? I've got a dangerous situation and it costs you three or four hours your day. The homeowner doesn't know any different. And, 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 and some of them don't frankly care as long as it works. Um, and, and this is where these two words in the speech bubble, duty holder. Um, as a CPD activity, I strongly recommend people go out and start researching what a duty of care is and what a duty holder is. I think, I think they're terms that we don't use enough. And when we're going to have any sort of engineering debate, where was the duty of care owed? Who was the duty holder? You know, if you look at safe systems of work, HSG 85, it talks about the duty holder. If a safe system of work changes, the duty holder has a duty of care to stop and reassess. That's no different on the DNOs. And the reason we say this is on Monday of this week, um, uh, two chaps died working for the DNOs, one um, in England and one in Northern Ireland. One was direct access to live parts and the other one was crush, um, which we've put the screenshot, it's on our Instagram page. So you can actually subscribe to the DNO um, intranet and get all these documents and all these bullets sent directly to you, which is exactly what I, I have done as well. So I just wanted to remind people about the, the duty, uh, duty of care because, uh, again, your defence regulation 29, electricity work regs, is you took all reasonable steps. So for when somebody says, oh, it's not my problem, I ain't going to wait around, is it reasonable to wait a few hours? Do we need to bring, build this into our, our pricing? Yeah, I mean, going, going in a, a circle where I do like training with companies and I have to help them define roles and responsibilities. If you are electrically competent, you have a responsibility of that higher level of competence. And you can't just leave because it's now a customer's problem if they cannot exercise the equivalent level of competence to pass over that problem. So you have to support them to so, pass information across. And then if the DNO then received the problem properly, then you've passed the competence across. A customer, especially a homeowner, cannot be expected to handle the competence. No, and I think- You can't just vastly, abandon them with it. I, I think it's vastly and grossly unfair to do yeah. that, to be perfectly frank. Um, now, just, just on this one, um, I just thought for anyone who's not, you know, who's learning, it would be interesting just to give a nice visual on how electricity is distributed because this is the network. This is what is known as the grid, um, you know, generated uh, um, at power stations, 23 kV, it leaves a power station, goes out onto high voltage transmission lines, super grid voltages, 400 kV, it then goes down to 275. It used to be, the whole country used to be 275. And then in the last 20 years, it's gone up to 400 mm. kV to create this, what they call super grid. Super grid. Um, so 275, a lot of the larger stuff, uh, then goes into what is known as a grid supply point. Some people know of them as bulk supply points. 
you know, for major projects like Crossrail, London Underground, they have bulk supply points where they come in, they transform it down to 132. Um, they then can manage that into 33 kV or 11 kV, depending on what the supplies are, large factories, heavy industry, light industry. And then from 11 kV subs in the local communities, you then get your 400 volt feeders, branches, as they call them, going out with then tees off of each phase into residential properties. And that's where your electricians will kick in, whether it's three or three phase or single phase. So I thought I'd, thought I'd throw that little piece of knowledge in. There's some questions in there. How do you get them sent to you? I'll cover that in one second, if you don't mind. Is that the URL you sent on WhatsApp? Yeah, yes. Yeah, I've sent you tons of stuff on WhatsApp. I, I forget yeah, how one much was the URL, and then you can, you can register for it. Yeah, I think it's G82 or something like that. There is, each oh. DNO has their own library online that you can go into, download back catalog um, copies, and also um, subscribe to updates on safety bulletins and all the rest of it. So whether it's UK Power Networks, Scottish Power Networks. The U um, URL, yeah, the URL you shared was g81.uk. G81, that's it. So can I but, share that URL with the chat? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah go for it. Do it now. So um, I said about two years ago now, there was something called a DSO coming. I don't even remember it was a LinkedIn article. Well, the DSO is certainly on the way. The standards are now being changed and adapted to start introducing the term. Um, for those who don't know, a DNO is the likes of the UK Power Networks, etc. The distribution system operator is where the DNOs are going. And the reason they're going that way is because of smart grid. Yeah, the rise of the prosumer, the import and export of energy from all parts of the grid requires it to become a system, not a network. Um, there is also something called a, a BNO, Building Network Operator. That's where you may have a high-rise building. And years ago, all the electricity distribution was wired by the power networks. I know I used to work 3DF Energy. And they would wire the submains all the way up. Um, and now, all of a sudden, they've turned around and said, no, Sodic, you own the building, you own all the power distribution, we'll own the cutout and, and the, the main intake fuses, and that's it. So that high-rise operator, or social housing, for instance, becomes a BNO building network operator. They're governed by a standard called G87, uh, but there's also ones called IDNO, Independent Distribution Network Operator, I'll tell you in a second, and EDNO, License Exempt Distribution Network Operator, and that's like the network rails of this world, because network rail are license exempt, they're a network operator, they generate, transmit electricity all around the country for railways. So it's there's, there's lots of new terms and new phrases coming out, so let's just go into if my mouse works. Here's a nice picture, love a picture. So this is kind of the electricity networks as it currently stands, color coded, Scottish and Southern. We've got a large chunk of Northern Scotland and Southern England. Uh, Western power have pretty much cut their way across country and down into the Southwest. UK power networks, that's made up of the old um, Southern London electricity boards and Eastern electricity boards. So there used to be, I think it was 13 um, electricity boards. Um, in the olden days, and they all had their own nicknames, like Southern um, used to be known as, uh, not Southern, Seaboard used to be called the Seaboard Mafia. Uh, Eastern Electricity um, were the greatest of them all, uh, which, yeah, I'm personally biased there because I've lived there. But yeah, so there you go. And what you've then got also is your IDNO. So who's heard of Energetics Electricity Limited or ESP or Independent Power Networks Limited or the Electricity Network Company? Um, even UK Power Networks, who are in the Southeast, have got their own IDNO. So you can go and pay them for their services. And then this is about, um, I think these DNOs de-risk their businesses by allowing private companies to operate on their network because in their view, it's about regeneration, getting mm -hmm. the network improved and all the rest of it. And also, so, so there's lots of new terms. Now, we weren't thinking about that 20 years ago, were we? No. So are these no. going to... No, I know. I mean, if once we go down the line of prosumer, are these things gonna? Is this drawing gonna look the same? Uh, yeah, but I think there'll be new drawings. And in fairness, I have seen a drawing, um, but I will. Um, that's gonna have to go in the next one because mm. again, it's tight. These take hours to put together and research and etc. Uh, etc. Et so, yeah. Um, yeah. Possibly, maybe. Um, we'll, we'll go into who to uh, get um, 
yeah let me let me just forward on electricity network have always been a great to deal with some of them are good some of them are bad um so this is the company we need to speak to the energy networks association and these are some of the standards that you can go and get they're free to download you can google them so and this is ones where i find the the arguments online quite bemusing um, energy network recommendation G12 requirements for application of PME to low voltage network. That's where you learn about criteria where they turn around and say, um, we will need an additional earth electrode at the end of every branch. Mm. And, and then you go, mm, what's that extra earth wire sticking out for and going down the, with the cable? It's the earth electrode connection. But we don't know that because we don't read these standards. And we don't take time to understand the network. As you know, Dave, for the last two months, I, I've made understanding networks my day job, night job, evening job, and morning job. Yeah. Um, it's a work issue. So anyway, yeah, GAE1, part one, framework. So if anybody here is working in construction and you're asked to go on price for a new build estate, if you go to GAE1, part one, framework for designing and planning a new estate. So how you would do the earthing, it talks about solar PV connection, EV connections all that good stuff how you do the earthing it's in these documents and they are free more importantly the applications and everything else that you need are are within the energy networks and the energy networks for those who may not have heard of them they are as they put the voice of the yes. electricity networks so all of those companies we showed you in the previous slide they report or to have these. a communications body um, they don't govern them but they kind of have like a joint industry body that they put staff into called the energy networks association one of the fascinating ones that i've seen there's engineering recommendations a guide for assessing the rise of earth potential at electrical installations didn't know that existed interesting document i'm currently reading it by the way so i'm not going to give you any more than that um so that's the energy networks i'm now going to use we'll get on some photos by the way encoding in a second um, I'm now going to use UK Power Networks um, as an example, our, my local DNO. So they have their own method and means to comply with, say, G12. Okay, so it's very much the hierarchy of standards and how they interpret it. So you've got G12, then you've got, say, their earthing standard, which they call EDS 6 one Again, all of this is free to download. You just got to Google it, go online, register for a UK Power Network account. Um, you don't have to be staff. This is all free. So you can get the earthing standard. You can get their standard for um, LV power supplies. Now, there's one specifically for up to 100 amps. And there's ones like this, which is from 100 amps up to just 2,000. So you can get various documents which will guide you. Um, you can get design documents. So here is, um, if you can, the guidance for why we put... Um, Meter boxes, 100 amp single phase cutout and surface mounted meter boxes. It shows the guidance for the bends, the size of the pipe, the layout. Please note in this little section here, mm -hmm. the boards are now divided. Meter, smart hub, isolated switch fuse. We are this seeing... is a good this is a good reference point if you're thinking I've got a, on an EICR yeah. have a reference to make an observation against. If you see a consumer unit installed. You are in breach of EDS 082110 engineering um, standard, engineering design standard for the DNOs. Now, the trouble is, is too many people at the moment are installing fuse boxes into these DNO uh, meter cabinets. They're not considering IP ratings. Um, they're not considering spacing, bending of cables. Uh, but more importantly, they're not uh, allowing for the fact that the environmental conditions right? The boards they're installing are not IP rated. We know these meter boxes always get damaged over time. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not considering about uh, use, access to skilled, can, you know, uh, authorized persons, instructed persons. We're not, we're not considering much. We're not even really considering EMI. The fact of the matter is, is these smart hubs, they transmit at quite high frequencies. You put a little small EV, um, you know, type A RCD or type B RCD. Have you done the due diligence? Have you actually said, oh, well, the emissions from that won't actually affect that? We know. We've seen videos online of people, people's RCDs tripping out. When they put radio up near them, they trip out. They can be affected. It's electronics. 
you don't do it. You do not put these boards in. And we've this ranted is, about this. This is this again something we need to like develop with Paul Skirm and yourself, where we talk about um, environments and the environmental conditions, conditions, temperature differentials, all that good stuff. Yeah. Grouping factors, all of this. IP ratings of the boards. You just don't do it. Really simple idea, guys. Go and get a meter box, an IP rated Sorel box, Schneider one or whatever. Put it next to it. Drill a hole, some nice stuff in glands, bit of armored cable, make it look really, really nice. That's a nice way of doing it. Mm. Just do it like that. Um, but again, the, the whole I haven't got space is, is used consistently for, well, what do I do? Do I turn the work down? Yeah. 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 If you know you're doing it wrong, turn it down. Yeah. Um, moving on, because that's a controversial thing. So I'll probably get a lot of hate for that. So I apologize <laughs> if I've upset you in any way, shape or form. I'm not trying to be a perfectionist. I understand there's a real world out there, but still find a better way. Um, cut out changes. So this is a great little document here that you can download from UK Power Networks. So if you want to know the ins and outs of a cutout, there is a guidance note that they produce with all of the information for the Henley blocks, how to do it, all the stages available. I'm not saying that Spark should do it, but the information of how they work on them is all available. So if anybody says there's a training course, there's stuff out there. There is stuff out there. There's lots of information. Um, there's also, again, the ENA, the voice of the networks. There is also guidance on cutout types and ratings, which I believe Mr. John Ward features in one of their episodes. Don't you, Mr. John Ward? You're right, yes. I uh, think so, yeah. Yeah, I think they borrowed one of your photos without permission. So it's yeah, only well, fair we, that we uh, do the same. We'll yeah, the response me, about uh, that. Seeing that photo later. Yeah. Um, so let's go into it. What would yep. we code these? So you've gone in. Um, there's evidently been um, someone was reporting there was a smell of burning. Run the poll, Dave. Let me get to the next photo. There you go from, from face on. Code that. Still live, by the way. There's a nice well, thing in the chat, actually, about um, Memora 2 boards are affected by smart meters. Yeah, I've heard that. Memora 2, yeah, I've heard that, actually. Yeah. I don't know. Have we, have we ever actually um, e found a document on that? Um, I'm going to try and get the head of EMC onto this our podcast at some point when I get five minutes to talk to him. Mm -hmm. He owes me a few favours. Um, All right. Uh, I'm going to close the poll. I think yep. we've got a fairly conclusive. We, we, we did have one troll here today. Did we? <laughs> well, well, there's always one, isn't there? Well, look, we've got a C2. <laughs> really? We've got a 97% uh, C1, 3% C2. I like the C2, whoever it was. Well done. Um, interesting, yes. Um, and no FIs from me today. Well, maybe no there might be FIs. There might be FIs on this. So let's move on because we've got a bit to go through. And there's a few little more <laughs> gems of knowledge. But again, I mean, yeah, I mean, before you, I mean, an FI might be justified because of the cause, causation as well, you see, mm. with things like this. Mm, Dave, you could be onto something there, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could be onto something. Um, let's talk about that a bit later, shall we? Mm -hmm. Thank you for reminding me of that. Okay, so next one, I've tried my best to kind of bring out the obvious. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask two questions. Um, one to code it and two what earthing system do we believe that to be it's a nice easy one this one okay c2 was me chris raddock <laughs> Yeah, this one, we got the uh, pitch leaking out, which is that black substance, which uh, when it's cold, it's completely solid. And yeah. it only flows out like that when it gets hot. So why would so, it get hot? Indeed, why would it get hot? So this is more about thinking about what's going on there. It's not just, oh, there's some mess fell out on the floor. It's what has caused that to become into that liquid state and fall out onto the floor and make a mess. Is it fair to say as well, JW, that, that uh, the intake cutout is the first real place that heat 
impacts that supply cable. The, 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 one of the things that, the, the, again, having worked for EDF, I always used to ask this question on buried cables and heat dissipation. I was always told, well, it's really cold in the ground. So they thermally, you know, you don't have to derate a cable in the ground that often um, because the first time that heat really affects them is when they come out into that supply cutout where it starts to realize, oh, there's a big load on this. And over time, yeah, you're right, it's pitch. It's um, that's a cast iron one that was from Mr. Lorimer, actually. That's from his personal collection. Um, he donated that to me. I used that on a, um, I just thought it was a great example of just an old lead uh, covered cable um, on Pilk was used on TNS. Um, so what is everyone, has everyone coded it yet? We've got pretty much 80% uh, have had a go. We've got here 63% have gone C2. Oh no, Daniel Casey. He has put, looks like TNS. Correct, you are correct. If I was looking at that on the electrical installation certificate, I would absolutely put that as a TNS service head. There is no doubt in your mind. It's clearly TNS. The configuration of it is TNS. It's just leaking pitch, which is horrible and disgusting. Mm. Um, and once that pitch all leaks out, you then have the risk of arcing or a short on the metal case. And if yeah, you report it fun to the DNO, <laughs> fundamentally you've got, you've got an insulation medium that's escaping, haven't you? <laughs> yes, you don't longer have insulation. Um, it can be a loose connection in the head, actually. Yes, you're bang on. And I've just realised, Dave, that I'm missing a slide of a certain intake, which we could have used. Mm. We'll use it for the next one. Yeah, next time. Right. So, yes, it is. Um, what does everyone put? Yeah, so yeah, 63% went C2. And we had 11% went C1, 18% FI, which I think oh. is, is your FI there, Paul? I think, I think that's justifiable because, again, is this, some people have said, is it a loose connection or is it loading, you know? I so think we we've definitely to... got, a, I mean, we must have Neil back in because someone's put a limb. <laughs> a limb. Only Neil would put a limb in. Um, Daddy Watts, nowhere telling whether TNS or TNCS now due to operation. Well, yeah, that and kind of one of the points we are making in this is um, we'll get onto it a bit later. But yes, uh, from 7671's purposes, that is a TNS supply every day of the week. When you now go away and start looking at some of the documents we've just shown you, uh, you will soon start to realize that there is uh, no such thing as TNS on a lot of networks, with the exception of, and this is probably the best time to say it. Um, TNS only exists if you have a private transformer now. Mm -hmm. um, there have been conversations about removing it from the regs in the past, but uh, as long as there are private networks with private TNS isolating transformers, it will still be in there. The problem is the wire and regulations committees have not done sufficient. No, they've not undertaken sufficient acknowledgement of this issue and told people in the wire and regulations and the associated guidance notes. And we know, because we are quite um, nosy, that Ofgem told them in 2012. Yeah, well, I mean... You can Google it. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's just funny that the information about the, the breakdown of the, the, you know, and repair works has been, has been out there for ages. I mean, um, Phil or Daddy Watts uh, found 7909 has got a comment on that. And that was published in 2011. So why has... Just not come into seven six seven one, or yeah, just even about just the, you know, the PMA, yeah. This thing about the PMA, it's on the um, electric vehicle charging course. Mm. It's actually in that that if you get a TNS, you're supposed to assume it's going to be PMA regardless of whatever else, unless you can get written confirmation from the DNO that it is <laughs> TNS and will stay that way. But of course, that's never ever going to happen in any kind of situation. So, is that uh, written? Is that written in the Kenyan book, John? Or is that from the I course? think it is, yeah. It was, it's definitely in, in the actual the, the CNG questions that you've got. So it, it is actually in there. Interesting. But assume that it's PME unless you know definitely that it isn't and you, it's going to be that forever. So certainly for electric vehicle charging, there is no TNS anymore. But 7671 doesn't go down that avenue, does it? It doesn't actually um, doesn't say that to that effect. No, it doesn't at all. Bizarre. Um, it's a bit behind. <laughs> That's the problem. I didn't know that, John. Actually, um, I haven't done the EV charge course. Well John's done, just one hundred percent. John's just got done his, isn't he? Yes, that's the uh, the book there. Yeah, that one. No pressure. No pressure on me. But now, if I get ninety two percent, the abuse that John will level towards me will never ever be able to be shown on social media. Um, 
But mm. right, yeah, so everyone's put a decent number. Here's another cutout, single phase this time. Again, what would you code that? And also, that strangely, oddly looks like a weird clip configuration. What, is this? what does everyone think? Right, yeah. One of the things that we've been doing while you're all coding this um, is we have been, as we've been going through and researching, if you look at our Instagram, we've been screenshotting certain key things to kind of just tickle your fancy and inform you a bit more. Cause I've been, I've been reading BS 7430 as well uh, in recent days. And there's some interesting tidbits in the various editions of that, which seems to have disappeared and appear in a DNO document. And yeah, it's, it's a bit like a, a, a spider's web trying to put together this um, narrative. And I also know the IET are researching this as well. Do you think maybe um, another guidance documents on the way? Probably, but I'm doing this research separately from them. Another book. Um, because but you they said don't earlier to listen to me. So you hinted earlier on when we look at the ENA documents, uh, you know, that, you know, they have these, but they don't tell us. And a lot mm. of the times they do it because they make training from it or they'll make their own publication from it instead of just telling us where everything is. Can we just stop here now and say hello to whoever in the IET is watching us on YouTube? well ahead of you <laughs> yeah anyway there we go right, right so let's uh, share this out we have got c2 62 percent c2 mm. one c1 so two percent c1 and 17 percent c3 and 21 percent fi i understand these fi's because i mean we can see this but we need to know more about the cause of this yeah and the thing is is if you use a clamp meter um, clamp me is only going to tell you what you're using at the time. And if it's the middle of summer, you're buggered. Uh, as you've rightly said, Dave, if you're ever really going to do any purist load monitoring of anything, you need to spend a week and it needs to be done in the, the coldest weeks of the year to really understand what the maximum demand on that actual installation is. Oh yeah. You need to, you need to be there when it's under the most stress. So if you're an electrical contractor um, and you want to make loads of money, Christmas time load monitoring, best time. Right, anyway, okay, okay, so everyone said well, it was C2, C2s. Yeah, C2. Okay, that was a, sorry, there was a clearer picture of it there. Um, that looks like a strange cutout, doesn't it, Dave? It looks old and phenolic-like, doesn't it? Phenolic-like, phenolic. Phenolic-like, yes. There's a word, everybody, phenolic. Yep. We may mention it later on. That's the one with the face on the front, isn't it? With the nose <laughs> in the middle and the two eyes. And yes. The, yes. The phenolic face. <laughs> I can't unsee that now, John. That's yep. just yeah. spooked me. Oh, you're going to see that every time you go to every <laughs> any place. Oh, yeah. Got one, yeah. Okay, so it's yeah, it's um, it's Mr. Phenolic, the car out the stairs back. Um, so we will get onto that and later on. So okay, good shout. So oh, this cool, this man. disaster, mm. this mess, this horrible installation. John Ward recognises it straight away because mm. it's mine. It's my house. It's downstairs. So um, what is that? What, what supply is that? Because there's a there's evidently a BS951 clamp on it, but it's also a link into the DNO head. So it's evidently maybe a converted one. But what does everyone think? And what would you code that? Or if you saw it, would you code it? It's probably a bigger question. There it is. I'm going to throw out my thoughts when I first saw this, because this is, this is in my house downstairs. Um, mm. When I first saw that, I thought, well, that was a TNS. It's been converted to PME. If I, if I did code it, it'd be C3 in it just to remove the damn clamp from it. Um, but I had thermal imaging done on this and there was a loose connection in the fuse carrier. That was as I moved into the house. So they changed it for a, a GRP cutout, funnily enough. Why? Because it looks like one of those black phenolic cutouts. Mm. In case people are wondering why we're going to make that black phenolic, it's because of... Uh information which we've obtained from various places which uh, suggests that they may not necessarily be up to the required standards so yes it's a very nice way of putting it mr ward um yeah there's a lot still to do on that yes that'll be available at some later mm. date in the... somebody's put there's no seals on it what did you do Paul? honestly gov mm. I, I i i when when i was like doing full-time training uh, testing i would have, i would have gone like oh it's a diy pme so maybe it's a tns that's failed and they've obviously then hooked it in to create an earth that way that's what i used to call this so right. let's change it up again because this was what worried me 
Mm. And it made me push my boat. That meter's rated at 40 amps max. That cutout was upgraded to 100 amp. Did they change your meter? No. Nope. So you could argue, and again, we'll, in the next one, we'll, we'll put a slide up that shows the, 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 the lines of demarcation between mm. the um, meters and the heads. Because whoever I pay my electricity bill owns the meter. I just rent it from them. Now, meters are supposed to be recertified every between five and 15 years, average is 10. Now, if you look at the meter number itself, you can see just here, I don't know if you guys see it, 69. So that was, an, that was the year that meter was made, it was 1969. It's supposed to be recertified every 10 years. And the last time it was certified is on the orange sticker, which 89. is 1989. Now, I happen to know that that meter is supposed to be recertified, and that was supposed to be done in 1999. So it's 21 years out of calibration. And, and I have been asked and offered many a time for a smart meter, and every time I have said, go poke it. But one thing I have asked for is a meter that is rated at 100 amp maximum load. Is there a risk that the metering equipment could potentially fail? Would they do that or would they just push smart meter on you? They have tried pushing smart meter, but they can't force it legally yet. Yeah. Yet. Yes, yet. That's the word, yeah. Mm. Yet. It will take some serious legislative change and any legislative change around energy, get, you bet your bottom dollar, they'll try and force that in somehow. They're already trying to lie to people anyway about it at the moment. Right. So, and so what does everyone think? For this is interesting. Meter? We have got an FI lead here of 51%, 51% FI, 38% C3, 8% C2. I am loving this because when I first saw that, I, that's all I did. I, I actually got, <laughs> this is quite sad. I actually got the regional manager for the DNO around my house and, 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 and argued with him over the state of the head and everything else around it. And he didn't disagree with anything I said, because he, even he said, yeah, you need to get a new meter rated 100 amp. We'll put you in a new GRP one. Um, and yeah, that's what, that's what they ended up doing. They haven't done the meter yet because I'm waiting for a meter company to be sensible with me. But I don't really use that much load-wise. Mm. I just don't. Not at any one point. Uh, no, I mean, your, 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 your gaff is mostly like electronic stuff. There's little demand there. Yeah, it is. There is. And I can see the DNO down rating fuses as well at some point. Mm. Um, I think that's that's going to vary now as well. Any support on the tails? Um, the tails, yeah, it's not my install. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, by the way, I'm just about to do this, so I'm about to change the board. Um, so I will be putting in new coloured tails, double insulated, and all the rest of it. Um, most demand is when he's boiling, boiling his piss. Jesus Christ, stop it! <sighs> okay, anyway. All right. Can we go on to the 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 elephant in the room? That clamp. <laughs> The clamp. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So before Mr. John Ward starts, I'm just going to give you a little bit of history. 1941 was the first edition of BS951. It was then updated in 1948. Um, and then again in 1986 over to UJW. Yes, the... Uh definitions of that which is what you've got there which is uh tube or tube depending on which country you happen to live in <laughs> it's um metallic conduit pipe rod or tube and then uh, most controversially the metallic sheathing of cables which uh, obviously uh, does mean that that nasty clamp we saw in the previous picture would have been allowed mm. at some point in the past because yep. that's metallic so, sheathing of cable yeah. so 951 clamps were once upon a time fine however that has now changed, and what was it, 20 years ago or something? That was removed, and now it just says metal conduit pipe or rod. So the reason there's a lot of them out there is because at one time it was perfectly valid and acceptable to use them for that, and uh, subsequently it was removed, but of course nobody went around all the places and decided to change all the clamps to a proper well, type. Well, looking, you're looking, John, at nearly 50-plus years of allowing Tembi clamps to be used. Now, I remember during the late 90s, um, I knew quite a few jointers, and again, as I said, I've worked for EDF. Um, there was quite a few single-phase installations where when they were going around and retightening them or putting new ones on, they were blowing up, uh, over-tightening, etc., weak cables, deficiencies, just age, external influences, etc. So it was deemed not a safe way to do it. Um, 
So there you go. So, so for anyone ever says to you, no, mate, they're not allowed. They were allowed. And this is where the engineering logic of you, when you, when the network was created, and when you took it on, you had to take it on and maintain whatever earth connection was there. Now, because their processes have changed and the standards have changed, doesn't mean they can palm off the responsibility of maintaining that earth onto you when you don't own the equipment. That's on the network operators. Where we need to be a little bit smarter in our arguments and our debates. And that's why if anyone wants to screenshot that and use that to beat the, um, uh, uh, the DNOs up with, by all means, again, safety quality content rigs 24 part one um there's there's actually about four or five references to the need to maintain existing infrastructure across that document um but if you then go a, a bit further 2009 edition metal conduit pipe or rod so that's where we are now and that's what they'll use they'll say nope it's not bs 951's not allowed on a cable absolutely but it was and you and you you the network use that to connect my electrical installation to the general mass of earth via an older type so you have to maintain that now if it's not safe you need to find alternative means which can be used via these spring clips or or uh, you know digging up the ground outside isolating the cable you know connecting in the head etc etc there are there are other means we have to take um they won't that's what daniel casey says and this is the argument you need to have so what you need to do is you need to do exactly what I did and say, right, who is the field manager? You need to ring them up and say, who's the guy responsible for my area? Find out who he is, speak to him by name and say, this is my problem. I'm not going away because I see this all the damn time. Trust me, he won't want you ringing him up every five minutes because my one didn't. And our, our first phone call, he couldn't argue with me at all. He couldn't because he was like, oh, right. Uh, okay. And when he came around my house, I showed him a copy of the old one and he went geez even i didn't know that um but and this, this is the trouble these dnos are under commercial pressures to palm off cost onto the electrical contractor via the consumer and the homeowner and it's wrong oh daniel's just said that there they have some bullshit form they use to fault unsuspecting customers into paying for it to be converted to a bme so instead of committing to their obligation to maintain what they've had they're trying to fool the customers yeah, I've seen that into form. paying for it I have seen that form and it's it I'm 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 actually disturbed by it because that form was evidently written by someone in a process department that has not had sight of the fact that the network that they inherited sold as seen in that condition should be maintained as that condition and if they don't have records which we know the DNO have terrible records the duty holder is on who mm. well they've claimed the ownership of the safe system they've got the, the electricians have always been told as exempt so there is a gray area here and the duty of care on their equipment is on them. Mm. Um, so yeah, anyway, I thought that would be a nice one to just break this up with right back into it. Coding, identifying, what do we all think again, paper and so you get lots of different variants of the way this is done. It's almost a joint as preference. Um, here's an interesting one. So you've got, you get a lot of intakes where you get little stringy bits of aluminium connected into sheaths and heads. Now, just be wary, some folks, um, don't cut them off because the BT lines at the end of their circuits, they would actually run a little small squiggly aluminium cable connect it into the DNO um, as their end of circuit earthing. Um, but loads of electricians have gone and cut them off. Um, this is um, something I think what's happened here is there's obviously an old copper clamp there. Um, and uh, what looks like a telecoms earth and somebody has used that to connect the earthing conductor to via a connector block. So what would you code that as? It's obviously a DNO job, obviously. And if you dig out their standards, you'll see there are thousands of standards on network conditions and various other bits. Mm. Um, and there's even a standard on changing the cutouts, by the way, and how they're supposed to do the earth connections. So... Um, what does everyone think? Approaching the cable, not correct for that size. How to calculate the CSA of that? Yeah, it's a good one. Personally, I know what I would do, um, but I, so I'd probably put a crimp lug on the earthing cable and connect it in. But um, right. got about eighty percent voted. We have got C two sixty four percent. 
yeah i think i think if you if you again if you look to 7671 could you say that that connector is not under the connection method is not putting the conductor under strain given the fact that the entire installation relies upon it for safety of operational and protective devices yeah we need at, the adequacy of that connection is definitely um if you but if you look at the pme guide that we looked at earlier on there are lots of references to a minimum 16 mil to connect the supply into the supply cable so and that's in a lot of the dno pme guides now um so yeah um c2 i'll go with that definitely um here's another one okay interesting again a metal cutout looks like it's a jw3 if you turn your head upside down which is a weird one one of john ward's old one maybe no this is lovely beautiful vintage color um three-phase supply neutral um, decent chunky looks probably like a 35 mil conductor there and they've obviously left a conductor from that um earth block the henley block but instead somebody's obviously come out and uh, over time affected a repair and just left a braided aluminium strap what do we think do you think that's suitable sufficient do you think we need to remove that earth what do you think guys that a new Bluetooth earth. <laughs> yeah, Daniel Case is but they're busy writing thinking all metal cutouts get replaced if you call it in. Well, some of them definitely would. They don't necessarily come rushing out to replace all of them because it depends on how dangerous it actually is, because some of them can be and others may not be as dangerous. So uh, it's a valid point, Mr. Casey. And one thing that Mr. Casey needs to realise is there is now a risk assessment for cutout changes. And if it is a metal one and it is not leaking pitch or there is no signs of thermal damage and there is a sufficient earth connection, mm. it will be left. Um, if it's, it, it's kind of weird because I, I reported one the other day and the guy came straight out, done a risk assessment on it and actually said, oh, I'll put this in for a couple of weeks. It's fine. Um, but it does need to be done at some point. Um, again, the jointers are always busy. They're all, DNO, DNO guys never sit on their backsides. They're always digging up streets because the network's aging. Uh, for me, um, what has everyone said on the coding? C2 it's going to right now. Ooh. 44% C2. Uh, it's a really divided C3. one. See, I wouldn't, I wouldn't C2 this. I would, I would C3 this as a maximum. My, my first thought is, is FI, shoot me. Um, but uh, the, the main earthing terminal, the connection point, is that Henley block on the top left. Mm-hmm. So if somebody's left that for the DNO, assuming that they would sweat it on or put on a clamp, the DNO haven't done that. You can see the DNO have sweated a braided, uh, flexible um, steel tape and then connected that into that uh, main earth terminal. Now, interestingly enough, the insulated Henley blocks, they're provided by the DNO and they're deemed DNO equipment under their own standards. So it's another interesting one. So evidently an electrician has gone in there and he's connected that and then left it for the DNO. That's what um, it looked like to me. It looked like that earth had been left for the DNO. To it has. Connect, it has. And the DNO have gone sod down. I'm not using that, mate. Why would I use a solid hard copper cable when it's an old lead that I have to manipulate and sweat a new one on? So they've left that. And in all fairness, if you do an adiabatic on it, it's probably, probably fine. fine. Yeah. And the thing with that as well is that if they put the proper roll spring on that you can't connect that copper wire to a roll hmm. clamp because yep. it's not designed for that so whoever left that obviously wasn't aware of that possible problem because there's the only way you could attach that to that lead pipe is one of those nasty old bs951 things which of course you're not allowed to use anymore so good old hd day sweating thimbles yeah they do occasionally do stuff with lead um live on un, live unearthed db metal cased equipment a17 fault code emergency from adam Live on a DB metal encased. Right, okay. Um, fair enough. Um, I think he's suggesting that that picture shown is not earthed. I think it is. Pretty sure it is. But I have an earth DB metal encased equipment, a 17 fold code. Emergency. In all fairness, I'm to blame for this because I've forgotten how many people have sent. I've had probably about 300 intake photos sent to me. Yeah. So I can't remember every single one of them. Um, oh, there you go. Actually, there you go. Ha ha. There's a, there's a larger picture of it. Just to step back. So there you go. It's a reasonably newish installation there. New intake um, tails for a new meter. New tails in there. It's just been left. Just been left. There you go. Someone's been working on the old stuff and they thought, nice chunky earth. Don't want that little thin bit there. Leave it for the DNO. 
effectively what it is. I have actually seen people lug these and bolt them onto the casing screws. I've seen that before. I've seen sparks actually cut off these little, what they consider straggly bits of wire mm -hmm. and then bolt it to the metal casing of the um, cutter. I've seen that done on a lot of occasions. Uh, not good, ring the DNO. That sparks interfering and manipulating stuff that shouldn't be. Um, here's another interesting one. Um, this was in a, a feeder pillar cabinet. Um, it's, this is more good old fashioned spot the hazard. And there's the hazard. So what would you do there? So you've got obviously got a three phase cut out on the left here. Um, and what you've also got here is another cut out, single phase one. Um, but what would you do with it? What would you code that as? Obviously there's been some jointing gone on because you can tell from the box that they've obviously jointed smaller cables to big cables. So there's obviously some is long this, lengths of run and stuff. Is this um, as found? Yeah, this is as found. Okay. Again, it's a separate small little DNO issue. ZD over five ohms, half diameter pi square. Saw that recently. There's some good conversations going on in this chat room. There is, yeah. That's mine. Free face system. There you go. Way oversized, long enough to be trapped in FP door. Scary. So different earthing systems, 200 amp fuses on that too. It's just a mess, isn't it? Really? There's a lot. There's a number of codes you can put in on this. This is the problem. There's a number just, of codes. Just one of the pictures sent to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ben, like even the bending radius and some of these cables going into the switch fuse and uh, aluminium conductor cables as well. It's no, I can't see any metering on it. Just, just looking at it. I, I, I don't understand how the DNO would even allow that to be connected, to be perfectly frank. But then again, one of the issues you'll find is there's a lot of installations where there are DNO intakes and there's no metering uh, because the DNOs still haven't got a proper record of everything they've got. Those are the covers sitting on top of the uh, join box there on the right. Um, like, that's why I asked if it was found that way because it looks like the covers are there. Well, that's what I got sent. Um, mm. I can't. My eyesight's shot. There is a cover of something. I don't know yeah, what it is though. On there, so. yeah. um, struggling to see. I should have zoomed so again, in. Again, if bit. if you, I mean, if this is DNA equipment and you approach it and you find that a cover like that is off, are you supposed to fit it on? You're supposed to touch it? No, you'd you'd see one that, wouldn't you? So you want to report it? You'd see one it. If you if you opened up a door and you saw that, yeah, I'm hoping everybody would be see one, see one in that straight away. But you, mm -hmm. again, you look at where why is there no metering, bending radius of the cables. Space and clearance around the cutout um, enable it to be yeah, accessed I mean, and maintained. I see so many bending radi radii now that I just I mean it's as if electricians just seem to have forgotten. Connor's highlighted a good thing: of it. reduction of CSA in that joint box. This one here, the red, yellow, blues. That is ridiculous. It's similar to that um, one we found the other day on the the PV, where mm. you had the six mils in the comb trunking jointing onto like the seventies and nineties and. Just made no sense. Take a picture, just run through all the issues with codes that are applicable to the different items. Um, from Daddy Watts. Yes, I get you, Daddy Watts. Don't worry, there'll be more of these. I think there's going to be more effort have required at weekends as well. Oh, sorry. Let me just end the poll here. Yeah. You're all Apologies. right. Everyone's, everyone's gone for C1, really. 57%. Yeah, yeah pretty uh, straightforward. It's that, obviously, live the... parts right in the way and uh, can't really avoid them. So. Yeah, 29% have gone C2. 7% C3, 7% FI. Um, but yeah, um, it's, it's, you know, if you see the covers are off, um, should you put them back on? I would. You would? I would, but I've been trained on intake equipment. Yeah, so that's yeah. the difference. You that's know what right. So should an electrician yeah, that is thinking that's... The no, God, no. Uh, listen, I'll tell you now, my recommend, any electrician who hasn't had any training by a metering or a network organization shouldn't be touching it. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. uh, the only reason I'm saying I would is because I've actually been through the five-day training. <sighs> five-day training. Oh, I've been through it, um, and I know kind of what the risks from working on cutouts and, and metering equipment is, and it's, um, yeah. An electrician? Would an electrician? No, because they're not familiar with the equipment. Right. 
So in this it's situation, familiarities with the equipment, right? Right, exactly. So in this situation, if this is in a cupboard, we would just close and try to keep that secure. If it was readily accessible, what would you yeah. do? Oh, if it was readily accessible, um, I'd put a barrier between it. I'd find somewhere putting a barrier. If I could figure out how to put the cutout in, again, that's yeah. part of the CPD. Barrier but signage. Would, barrier signage. Communication yeah. with the client. An immediate yeah. contact the DNO. Yeah, 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 all that. Yep. Absolutely. Awesome. What's everyone said? C1, C2 is good mix there as well. Yeah, C1, C2 is good mix. Let's move. Right, next one. Uh, doo -doo -doo. This, this is a picture that got sent to me on an intake. I think there was a question raised with this one. Yeah, it was it was about the earthing because some people have never seen this before. And this makes me feel really old. So for everyone watching, that on the right is a good old fashioned time switch. Um, and basically what, what happens is, is you take a supply out of the DNO head, you then take it into a little fuse, it then feeds into the time clock, um, it then loops across, across and back into the meter and that just sends a little signal to say change that from single to second rate mm -hmm. basically so your economy seven or whatever and then your earthing terminal there's obviously a connection into the side yep which is a connection into the neutral and there was it was raised of i've never seen it like this but if you also look in the photo on the left is where the confusion is because what you can see is a tembi clamp on the cable Tembi clamp indicates TNS. That connection there in the right-hand side of the cutout indicates PME. Mm -hmm. What is the supply characteristics? So, what do we think? And what do we code? It's a cracking one. Yeah, those time switches, the uh, the actual thin wire that comes out, the fifth one to the meter is actually a switch neutral. Has to be uh, controversial there. So the uh, it, it switches on that onto the neutral to switch the other rate. And if it's not connected, then it's on the primary rate. Oh, yes. Jesus Christ, John, you are, I've got a good eye. I need to get new glasses badly. My eyesight's that's going to pop. That's feeding at the bottom. It's quite unusual to see those because on half of those you find there's no fuse at all. It's just wired directly into the supply. With no fuse. I used to fit them. I used to fit them years ago. I did. I used to fit them when I was uh, younger and I was working days and nights. During the day I was crawling under people's cupboards, mm. replacing blown fuse, fitting them, wiring up these old time clocks and stuff like that. I love those little ampies, these little 100 amp digital ampies. They were a pleasure to fit. No more awkward space issues. They were just great. You take out these big clunky things like that replacement with that you can see where the old one went there's the screw that hung it up by but yeah so what do we think um do we think it's a tns do we think it's a pme what do we declare it as well as um a couple of you have suggested you know um maybe testing each one to see what you got because the polling has picked up an fi on this that's a good one and i would actually say on the polling it's an fi 62 percent um, fi so yeah, no PME label. Yeah, because the PME labeling is really weird. They've only just revised their standard to mandate yeah. PME labeling now, which is bad because they were able to get away with not PME labeling it before. Um, I would suggest that there was a TNS there at some point. Um, the TNS, somebody um, has probably made some form of effort to put a bigger, thicker conductor on. Um, and then eventually the DNO have come out and they have uh, also PME'd it. However, did anybody spot the white painted cable that goes down the surface trunking? Can you see that? Going to throw more at you. This is a complex one. This is quite a complex one. But there is a white cable. Please tell me, everyone, if you can see this. Um, but where my arrow is, there is a white cable that comes out the connector block as well. Is it painted white or is it white? It's painted white. As you can tell, it's the same colour as the walls. Right. So somebody's painted that. They've evidently renewed the green and yellow at some point. It does go to an electrode. End of line. Bang on, Chris. So there is a lot uh, in, in documents. There is, if you go back to 1992 even, 
the London Eastern or Southern Electricity Board produced these PME guides, the first of their kind. Mm. And anything that was on a branch, which was a, a branch is a t like a radial off a feeder cable in the street. Anything that was end of line that had more than four homes on it, at the end of the line, if it was PME, you would put an earth electrode at the end of line in case of a loss or broken pen. And that's what that is. That's actually an earth conductor down to an electrode um, at the source of supply. But everyone assumes it's TT. And that's where it gets really complex. T TNCS TT, yeah. Um, that's where it gets really complex. So for me, what you've got here is you've, you've got what was a TNS or someone has attempted to assume it's TNS, but it's actually a TNCS with an end of line earth electrode. All of that is the DNOs, but it's just, a, you would think almost it's TT, TNS and TNCS. This is why I find this a, an amazingly interesting installation um, because it's fairly evident that electricians may have played around with this a little bit. Yeah, um, and it's, it's just frustrating that they don't have a dedicated label on that. Oh God, yeah. Conductor. It's actually, in, you know, inform us. It's also that black, it's that black material again, but it's not the happy smiley face black material guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is, there's a reason behind this. This is a cracking photo. Um, if anybody wants these pictures or presentation, let us know and you can have them. And there you go. There's it a little bit clearer. You can see there, there's a conductor. You can see the clamp on the cable. I personally think an electrician's put that clamp on. Doesn't look like a DNO, I've done it. That definitely looks like a PME cable. It's so thin and skinny. Yeah, I mean, it's been painted. Why did they put that earth on there then? That to me looks like a, a late 70s PME install where someone has gone, oh, that can't be right. Stripped it back, clamp onto the armor or the concentric, gone, there you go, jobs are good and not realizing. Um, and this, they probably thought it was a TT and they thought they'd convert it to a TNS. Who knows? But there's a story of many, many weird things going on there. Old mm. PME with non-informed Sparky Bodge. Daddy Watts has got it right. Bang on. It's a, but it's fascinating because of Sparks, we don't get to debate installations like this. This causes us so much confusion that causes us time, which causes us money. Um, more importantly, how do we advise accordingly? How do we engage with the DNO? Um, so those standards that we introduced you to earlier on, you'll start to see diagrams or on our Instagram page, you can see diagrams of uh, network branches where you've got single neutral earth cable jointed to a PME, uh, combined neutral earth, and then there's electrodes at the end of the lines. Um, mm. And it's all explained in the standards. But for some weird reason, chapter 54 doesn't cover all it this. It doesn't, thing. does it? No. Marcus it said, is. Is electri are electricians allowed to test this electrode? um technically we're not using it for an ra technically yes we can and the reason being mm. is is that earth block is the customers not the dnos because the dnos main earth terminal signed there yeah because the, the the pme earth terminals have to be insulated under their own standards so this thing if you provide a four or eight way steel earth block and a label and they will not connect to it yeah they won't. And this is why they're providing separate Henley blocks now, insulated Henley blocks to connect into. And there's, there might be a reason behind that even. <laughs> See Daniel's comment now. We're so self-indulgent sitting here looking at this. <laughs> we are self-indulgent. I know it's great. But yes, um, yeah, it's <sighs> good. I thought it was a great one to go through. Um, it's, it is. And again, it's, um, it's, it's just one of those things that unless you do your research, you're not going to know from the industry. Andrew is not going to tell you. You're sitting in front of that and you just don't know unless you do the work yourself. But more importantly, I think it's really good this peer talking as well and debating on the chat. So anyone mm -hmm. watching on YouTube, we're not just talking amongst ourselves. Um, no, no, there's a good, like, how many of us are in it right now? I don't know. 56. Here we go. 56 <laughs> shadows 50, on a Wednesday night. 56 of us self-indulging. <laughs> self-indulging. Right, here's a good one. So this is a picture sent to, uh, to me. This yep. is um, Scottish Power. Now, this is just a catalog of, of improvements. But again, it's that nasty black nasty type car. Yep. Lots of corrosion, lots of rust, probably coming from water seeping through cracks in the wall. Um, you've got obviously, yeah, the lidding's missing. Um, you can see there's a separate earth there. Somebody's done a nice job, though, trying to label it all up and... Yeah, it's you know, been an effort. There's been professional effort. There has been a professional bar. effort there, without a doubt. Look, there's an isolator. 
um, and stuff like that. The neutral is separate. Um, but if you were looking at that, what would you say the earthing is? Now, I'm going to put my mouse where the earthing you know, might be. But how would you assess that? What, what, what coding would you give to that in general? Because there's a few there. Um, but just on, on the supply characteristics, what would you mark the sheet it is? And how would you code just that intake? Because let's be honest about it. Every single one of us, when we go into a house, the first thing we do is check the bonding and the earthing. If we don't, we should be leaving. Um, and yep. within 10 minutes of looking at the intake and the board, we generally know whether an installation is going to pass and fail. That's not to preclude us doing the inspection or doing the testing. But generally, your, your intuition generally is most of the time right. Unless it's IBS, then it's just stomach twitching, but you can't help that. Mm. So what do we think? All right, come to comments saying, is there a fuse neutral? Is there a full spot. fuse? Good spot. Good spot. Yeah. yeah. This is an old one. I ran out of my handy wipes. <laughs> <laughs> Bad night for TV. Um, what does everyone think? All right, let's... Uh, got 6% have voted. I'll, I'll... I'll tell you one thing I've noticed while yep. everyone's doing this. I reported a DNO cutout of a hole in the top. They now fill them with putty rather than a plastic insert and have them go into it and tighten up a screw. They now get a putty, an insulating putty. They mold it in their hands to activate it and they stick oh, it in those... the holes. Yeah. And I thought, you lazy bugger, just, just change the cut out. But hey ho, anything to reduce risk to the operatives, I suppose. Okay. Uh, a few more have just voted. Let's have a look. C2, 54%. 11 like plumbers, mate, yes. C1. But not plumbers, mate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, C2, yeah, it's a special putty from the DNOs. Again, if you want to know what the putty is, there's actually a catalogue of all the approved products that they have online. Um, it's amazing how much knowledge of the, the DNOs is online. It's frightening. when you can Trust me, you can start going down that rabbit hole and come out eight hours later for breath. 27% um, agree with that. C2, um, but I'd also throw an FI in there as well. Mm. It's definitely a bit more work. I I'd definitely be making a phone call to the DNO and say, look, hang on a minute, lads. Um, is this right? There's a lot of rust and corrosion here. Um, you've got a possible fuse neutral there. Um, yeah, I would I would definitely say, and FI would be my first choice. Um, on the rusty trunking, yeah, C2 makes it C2, but on the DNO cutout, definitely an FI on that, to be honest with you. Okie dokie. Uh, oh, and yes, they are single insulated tails. Um, and yes, the trunking lid was missing. So no mechanical protection as well. So yeah, C2, I think everybody's pretty damn right. Uh, C1, if there was a small child or something present, not that it would be on a three-phase cutout. Who knows, people with small hands. Trunking fill ratio, not right. Yes, it's too packed. It's a bit of 2B2 on a three-phase is never a good idea, really, is it? Um, okay, let's move on. So here we go. What have we got here? Well, this installation is connected to PME system. It's a different, a little bit of a different one. This, if you um, can, you see a couple of codes on it. Just looking, because remember we are coding intakes. So this uh -huh. is a good one. We know it's PME because somebody has um, used um, slotted screws. They're not completely level. Yeah, I just hate that when they're at different angles. Um, Tails boils it. boils it, does it mate? It, 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 it. I'm never saying that again. I'm never saying that word again. Um, yeah, there you go. So, you strip conductors there. On, yeah, Daniel's on the tails. pulled that one up straight away. Exposed insulation. What about on the right hand side here? Okay, let me go back a bit. So, I've got that cut off there, and I've obviously got so there's an old earth connection there into the terminal, mm -hmm. and this is obviously a new one, a bigger one. Into the Oh, um, interestingly, though, these cutouts were available for a number of years where you would have basically plastic around the side and then the exposed earth connection on. Yeah, I just you don't see many of them anymore um, because obviously they don't comply with their current standards. Um, but I just thought it was really interesting. This is a cutout because you've got basically the cable comes through two layers of heat shrink on the cores there. You know, most people that would be behind mechanical protection again. Um, but a lot of them, they're just these 
single floating cutouts with an exposed earth. So what would you code it as? Blue phase as well, with a little blue disc there. It is, yeah. Other colours are available. What you make of I that? would Ben. I would yeah, argue, Ben's good. See, for me, I would probably I would I would FI the cutout. I would ring the DNO and say, Are you still happy for these to be used? Mm. Um, and then the duties passed on to them. Um, and I would I'll probably see to the tails. Um, just if it's in a home and there's children present and all the rest of it and it's accessible. Yeah, Needs a little bit of TLC. Put, um, about the voltage on that neutral or earth connection could be different from the true earth that someone's standing on. Yes, it could. PME. Yeah, it could, without a doubt. It could indeed. Um, it's a good point. Mm, okay. What do we think? We've got C2. C2 is good. 69% have gone C2. 22% have gone FI. Yeah. Oh, I could. Yeah, they definitely. It, it. It. just needs. It just needs a little bit of TLC and a little bit of um, duty discharged. Not to coin yeah. a corny phrase, but just a well, couple of C threes. This is a classic. Now I have found loads of these at the time, and you can just see 1974 written across that, can't you? Really, danger live means. And someone went, great job that. Thirty years later, Shumley probably moved that. Just to get that big clunky earth in there with a the neutral, <laughs> you know, not to disturb the tape much. Um, but again, a metal cut out. If you can probably see there, you've got on the right hand side of the metal cut out, you've got a bolted connection, which then mm -hmm. goes down and off uh, with the cable. But you've then got the installation earthing conductor connecting in with the neutral. So, what do we think that is? It's obviously uh, TNCS. Could it possibly be another end of line? Let's say, is it another end of line or three phase? Or yeah, that's my my guess would be if there's a separate cable going with it. Um, there's this. Well, there's only two logical choices with it. There's it's either an end of line earth rod, or they've done a repair on a a, a pilt cable that's gone all the way through from the joint into mm. the installation. Um, but that's that's also looks like it's an asbestos one as well. This might be an, oh no, actually no, sorry, no, that's not asbestos. My apologies. That's the old that's the old electricity board sticker on that. Full oh, blimey, don't see many of them around anymore. And then some funky seals. So what would we what would we code that as? What's the tape about? It's falling off on tails. Is the blue cable actually white? Uh, no, it's just the way the tape's lying against it, but yeah. good spot. What do you think? TNCS conversion? Yeah. Definitely. Something. Could have been TNS, could have been TT. So this is the trouble. We've got to, we've got to, whether we like it or not, we're going to end up speaking to the DNOs more and more. The trouble is I don't think the DNOs want to talk to us. Because I think the DNOs are not resourced to talk to us. And this is the problem. And they will do everything they can, which is why they have those fob off sheets for electricians um, to say, get the customer or get your electrician to do it. I think, I think, um, I think fundamentally what's, what's evident is they know that there are issues and they've prepared themselves and armed themselves with different strategies to get away with it as long as possible. It's yeah. probably worth also yeah. mentioning that in their documents, it does state that the customer's electrician, um, if they go to someone registered with these organizations called the NIC, EIC, or ECA, mm -hmm. then they're happy. But what if they went with NAPIT or somebody else? Would they not be happy then? Is, is there a far-reaching effect here of, of if there's a logo on it, we've, it's fine, we don't care, we don't mind? Or do NIC you have to kind of, book? You kind of have to ask, about? yeah, you have to ask what kind of handshake has happened for them to say if this, you know, this equals some level of acceptance. Yeah, it's just a crock. It's this 1970s. Make sure your name is in every single procurement manual and standard under the sun. It's mm. just whatever badge you wear doesn't make you, doesn't improve or enhance your competence. Um, that's okay. just it. So, what do you think? We have gone C2 here. 
We have got 50, twos, yeah. 58% have gone C2. 13 went C1. Okay. Eight went C three. Yeah, I don't think twenty three percent went FI. I mean, that, yeah, that tape is the question. If that tape is obviously easy to remove, so it's not fixed or anything, and if you can then immediately touch live parts, I can see why C C ones have come in here. But it might be in a locked enclosure. So the last question: Do we bomb the ladder? <laughs> bomb the ladder. Do we bomb the ladder that's virtually leaning up against the head? So this, the, this is where the problems lie, isn't it? I mean, you can see the single core cables where they're taped together with each phase. You've got then the, what looks like the double insulated cables going off to the main switch gear. Has that room been loved? Well, someone tried to tuck something behind there, but it's now used as a storeroom. Yeah, I mean, these kind of locations should not be used to store things, especially things like ladders that are heavy and are easily, you know, you put them and you spike the feet downward in that direction. That head is going to get knocked. So a just, of times. For the, just for a day, uh, where is it? Somebody has said um, the d -d 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 black looks taped too. So those cables coming out of the head are taped. Yeah, so you can they see are a, phase taped. Okay, bit, red, are, yellow, blue, black. You can so see there's somebody, a bit of red peeking between the yellow tape. Yeah, so, just so somebody marked. used one drum of red singles and just yeah. taped them up the phase colours. That used to be done a lot. Let's be perfectly frank. They, that's what people. That's why it's insulation e easier to hold tape than extra drums, isn't it? Of course, it is. It's far easier. Yeah. Um, right. Next one. Ooh, it's a classic. This one. Ooh. So this is a looped service. Um, this is where the service will, and a domestic incomer will come into a cutout. It will then supply you and your fuse. That connection will then be made to come back down via a cable, punch through and go into next door. It was basically a money saving thing um, in decades gone by where they could save money on cable. It's a bit of a nuisance thing because if your next door neighbor goes down and you're looped off of it, you're at the behests of them. You also effectively have each house on the same potential zone because a rising potential on next door will be a rising potential on yours. Um, if they disconnect them, you potentially lose your earthing, depending on how the earthing is configured. But as you can see here, it's a right old, good old fashioned mess. You've got an earthing conductor wrapped continuously around one clamp onto the other. So it's fairly evident that um, there's no real earth continuity on that cutout. Um, the insulating compound on the cutout above is, well, evidently failing because there is pitch melting all over it um what advice would you give or what would you do what code would you place upon that for me it's a phone call um mm. and it i is. would definitely be doing a zeddy i'd be doing a zeddy on that installation to start with straight away to be perfect i wouldn't be touching those clamps but if you noticed as well those clamps they're not tenby clamps they're another different type of clamp because the DNOs did experiment with other clamps while they were um, walking away from BS951. Yeah, that style of that coppery type is quite common around here. You see them all the time when it's not the uh, 951 style. All right. So the one on the left has two connections on it. Does the one on the right have one connection or two and the other one's under pitch? I think it's just hidden under the pitch. So it's, right. It's, it's just two bits of bent copper or material with screws in the end and it just mm. clamps down either side they're not very good they're usually loose and dropping off mm. so what do we think run the poll we are we have 58 percent have gone c2 oh 59 it's just tweaked which is yeah oh, there you go. 57 let's stop it now let's see two and FI. i think i think um, again right. everyone hated me in the domestic for doing fis but when you're coming into dno intakes a lot of there are questions investigation. yeah there are questions because um we have to get more information on and this. we will be hated for doing this webinar because we are talking about stuff that 1110 says is exempt yet the duty holder and the duty of care sits on who who is relying on this mess for the safety provision of the installation and again so so subsequently all you can do is, is use your engineering judgment yep. to then, on behalf of the client or with the client, contact their authority. They may completely blank you off, but at least you've done your due diligence. Daniel's done a good one. Could the pitch seat between the conductor and clamp res result in increase? Yeah, I think it would. That's what I was kind of thinking about when it's in there. Yeah, definitely, especially when they're especially loose. It, especially as it starts to dry out. 
Yeah, it will do. It will it'll do. Def- it'll definitely de- um, decrease the resistance. To some it is some an degree. amazing. This we're lucky we've got some amazing pictures of some pitch leakage because it is a phenomena that you do have to really start looking at a lot of things and getting the DNO involved because, as you know, Dave, we've recently found a a, 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 D- a loose connection inside of a DNO head. I've found a number of loose connections on fuses and stuff using thermography as a tool. Um, even on the Fleur One Pro, do you remember I plugged it in and found it very quickly uh, mm. on a main fuse intake? So, mm. well, we got what everyone said C2. Right. 57% have gone C2, 30% have gone FI, 13% went C1. Uh oh. It's, yeah, Daniel it's Casey John's... made a good point there about uh, to actually call the DNO, the number is 105. It is. I rang them the other day. 105, straight away. Well, you don't have to look it up or anything. That's the number wherever you 105. are. 105. In fact, put it all in your phones. It'll magically route it to the correct place wherever you are. So. Yes, it will. Um, and that isn't probably advertised enough, is it? That should no, be I mean, the back, how many, it, back how, all the industry body magazines. How many guys in the chat here have actually been involved with calling 105 or contacting the DNO and actually talking to them? Can you guys just put a, a Y for yes if you guys have, or an N if you haven't? Just oh, it's, oh yeah, look, oh wow, okay. I mean, they obviously have other numbers, but yeah, it's obviously yeah. in the bad old days when you had to sort of look at the number for them, and then if it was this particular one for a particular DNO and all that stuff, it's uh, kind of gone now. So right, there's literally just a couple of no's. Everyone else is yes. So mm-hmm. it seems weird that we don't have any kind of standardised um, approach to doing it. Everyone's kind of doing it on their own. Might be worth five. kind of, um, mm, might be worth kind of um, either in the Discord or something, kind of, you know, di- you know, combining our efforts to find the best way to behave and get get what we need to from DNOs, because some of you guys might get blown off by them. So here's here's an interesting one for you. So um, re- mm-hmm. regulation one one zero point two, the regulations do not apply to the following installations, and it's number one. Systems for the distribution of electricity to the public. What's a system? How have they defined a system? Because for me, a system for the distribution of electricity to the public is the network, not the intake. Because that's the point of fusing, the point of demarcation. That's the point where it's everything that is relevant for your safety under this mm-hmm. book is quite important. Mm-hmm. Just a different way of thinking about that clause, really. Um, 110.2. It's, it's always bugged me. That has always bugged me, that one clause. Always. Um, anyway, let's go on to the next one. Um, beautifully orange painted uh, pilk cable there um, with what looks like a variant on a Tembi. You can see on the left there is a free phase installation, free phase meter. John's favourite person staring at us in, in stereo which is very strange, um, that weird phenolic head again. Earth bar, so it's obviously a commercial installation. You've then got an insulated cutout, and, and a lot of these now Henley blocks are actually having labels put on them. Earthing terminal, and it says PME system. PME system. Mm. That's interesting. So if we look on the grey cable coming out here, it goes up into the neutral, but we also have an earth clamp. That's, is this like a Frankenstein cutout or something? Or is this a common thing? It's a common thing. And I was told by a jointer the reason why some of them leave them in is because depending on where it is in the network, that is put in, left in situ to ensure there is no potential differences between the sheath of the cable yeah, mm-hmm. and the supply um, earthing system. So if you've got obviously that copper bar there uh, at the top, sorry, the copper bar here, which is connected to the neutral and yes. that cable sheath, there could potentially be a potential difference between the two. So it's kind and of that's why they link of, them. So it's kind of reversing it. It's not taking the TNS separate from that. It's actually earthing the exposed conductive part of the supply sheet. Uh, effectively, yes. However, just to throw something more in there, if you have neutral currents, by doing that, you can create circulating currents on your network. Yeah, yeah that's not a good idea. Uh, that can easily be solved by insulating that part of the cable. So the problem is the supply cable has exposed metallic parts. 
effectively yes. so yeah. if they covered that up that would get rid of that problem well if you think about what a pilk cable is constituted as um the supply conductors the neutrals and the lives are very well insulated from the sheath mm. now um, when you take any conductor for earthing you'll have a, a volt drop or an r2 value and if you have two conductors at two different potentials and two different impedances you can get a potential difference across the two mm. the only way of mitigating that is by linking them with a supplementary bond which creates spinning circulating currents potentially and guess what guys this is also mentioned in the dno documents it's buried honestly my head's been frazzled with this stuff over the last couple of months so again it, it, it's the uh, the configuration is almost in the, the competence of the jointer to a certain extent. Now, this is a perfect example to, to just talk to you about one little note. Um, uh, and if you don't mind, I'm just going to read it out. So mm. it, there's a note in the UK Power Networks document, and it says replacing an older SNE network. So that is definitely an SNE network. It's, a, it's an old PILC cable, separate neutral and earth, with a PME network, may lead to situations where customers would have an existing connection to a network earth terminal, which may no longer be appropriate on a PME network. Aha, doesn't that look like that? Uh, 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 an, an earth terminal may not be appropriate on a PME network. Um, appropriate on a PME, in such cases, consideration should be given as to whether proceed with conversion and make alterations as are necessary to the installation of such affected customers or to make the changes to the network in a manner which preserves the essential separate neutral and earth characteristics of the network and the supply connection. Simply providing a separate neutral earth connection to the combined neutral earth cable will not necessarily avoid the hazards of a PME network constructed using combined neutral and earth cables for these types of Indian installation in the event there is a break in the neutral conductor upstream of the connection. Link them. Mm. simple as that imagine if there is a loose connection in a joint further upstream on that uh, neutral the old pilk neutral you're definitely then going to get a potential difference between the sheath and that earth bar only because the, the two, sheath two are two values is, so it's the sheath that's the problem and so you leave them linked which then drops the overall impedance which is why there's even statements that state that if a cable is buried, you can consider that the old pilk cables as a, a, a longitudinal electrode, a vertical you're horizontal gonna, electrode. You're going to have circulating currents, aren't you? Yeah, you will do. Which is an EMI issue under 444. Uh, massively. Yeah. Well, PME is an EMI issue on itself. It, it yeah. just is. Yep. It's absolutely okay. terrible for that. So. The networks are in a, in a pretty bad state, um, to be perfectly frank. So what has everyone said on that one? I actually haven't lost it yet. Hang on. Oh, sorry, <laughs> mate. I was, I was interested in, talk, in listening to you talk on that one. Sorry. Terry yeah. Austin has put, um, is that a hole in the bottom of the head or a plug? It's actually a wooden plug, plug isn't wooden, it? Wooden plug. Yeah, just to stop the uh, pitch falling out. So that's uh, that one. And yes, neutral currents from imbalance or harmonics would now be shared on the neutral and the sheathing. Yes, they certainly will. So, mm -hmm. yep. PME and TNCS in general is absolutely hideous for EMI. It's pretty much the worst possible choice you can actually have. So if EMI is an issue, you don't want TNCS in your building. I think kind of the point of this being though as well is, is not, it's not what we were taught. When I was taught, it was TNS, TNCS or TT. Yeah. The earth rods every 30 meters. No, no bloody well is not every 30 meters. Even at the joints, they just put a coil of copper wire, put the joint on top of it and that's it. And even, even there, they're not even driving the electrodes like they're supposed to be doing under their own standards. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, not, it's not as great and as good as we all think it is. The fact of the matter is we now, we're now entering that world where we can guarantee a live conductor into each installation, but we can't guarantee a neutral and earth connection. Now maybe people will start to realize why foundation electrodes are coming into the regs. Because all that's happening is it's being kicked over the fence to the consumer and to the contractor. Yeah, and you put a foundation electrode in, you've got your own neutral earth reference point. And fundamentally, if we do go down that avenue of foundation earth electrodes and then islanding, we are going to get rid of a lot of these problems. Yeah, we will. But electricians will have to engineer we're, it. We're going to have to learn it. We're going to have to learn and engineer it. Or wait for, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, 60% uh, have voted. So let's go with it. We have got FI 70%. And 23% went with C2. 
Okay, so this was a video I was sent. We know this one. Um, there's been a couple of these now um, where people have had gas services bonded locally into various electrodes and pits. I mean, that was done as just a bit of a lash up, let's be perfectly frank. Um, the, but this, is a had, main, this is a main protected bonding yes, conductor connecting to a gas pipe, but it's actually going up to an electrode. It is indeed. Um, okay. Now, I have spoken to the DNO and the DNO have admitted that they do do this at times is provide a local earth electrode and it all depends on the gas network the supply network and where they are on the on on branches and proximity to substations and all the rest of it so if you find this stuff yeah there's a chance it may be someone who just doesn't understand earthing and bonding or thinks that bonding needs to be earthed in that way um but there's also also a chance that someone from the dno could have just turned up and lashed but something in this this kind of if if this is legit and not a balls up yes. which i suspect it probably is but if no, it's legit it is. This, i mean this yeah there's lack of mechanical protection that conductor out there anyway yeah but if this is carried out we should have a paragraph of information informing electricians of that of that deviation from the norm so they don't scratch their heads looking at it going, oh, this looks like it's a cock up. And, and um, believe it or not, in some of the network guidance, there is actually lots and lots of references to additional electrodes. Um, there is reference to where PME is used not providing electrodes, um, allowing the person to provide their own. There's, there's, oh, mate, honestly, the amount of stuff in these PME guides. This is why we're going to do a part two on this. There is so much we've uncovered and read in the last few weeks alone. It'd just be impossible to cover all of this in, yeah. in this one webinar. I've, I've seen this kind of thing a few times, but only in like um, like temporary systems for you know where people aren't sure what to do, so they just spike in and they connect an earth. But I've, no, I've never seen it on the gas pipeline. Mark, that. did you want me to do a poll for that? Or not? Oh, sorry, mate. Um, you let's just skip on for that one. That's just more right. talking point. Mark Holmes has said the Energy Network Association RA um, says the RA should be less than twenty ohms which is really interesting because the, there's, there's another document which has come from off Jim, which says it shouldn't be 20 ohms and says something about the, uh, do you know what? Um, can you guys talk amongst yourself while yeah. I get the actual phrase? Mark, it's quite what important. RA is that? Is that, is that any RA? Or is it what specific RA is that referring to, Mark? Jimmy, that's the end of line. Um, is this the end of line electrode it's yeah. referring to? Okay, got it. Okay. So if it's higher than that, it's not actually going to do a whole lot. So and to say you wouldn't expect it to be that. So this is the off gem. Yes. Right. Um, just to let everybody know, off gem regulate the uh, the DNOs, and off gem on 13th of September 2013 mm -hmm. have said there is a concern that by giving a fixed maximum earth electrode resistance value of 20 ohm, this is taken as the default value. The rise in potential is not calculated and proved to be safe. It is not clear that 20 ohms is an appropriate default value. It is therefore suggested it may be appropriate to leave the wording to sufficient to limit the rise of potential upon open circuit neutral conditions rather than suggest a value. And this was off GEM's proposed changes to G12 submitted 13th of September 2013. So Mark, you're bang on right with the 20 ohms, but it's fairly evident that the industry regulator is telling them you might want to do a bit more or consider a bit more. And before you say anything, they've not done enough yet. Um, but I think that makes it far more complex. I like the idea of having a fixed resistance. Um, it allows me to at least do some form of uh, calculations a little bit better. Excuse yeah. me. Chris Roddick said, wouldn't the reading be based on the maximum load? And yes, it absolutely would be because if you've got a higher load, then the actual resistance needs to be a lot lower to have the same effect of reducing the voltage. So, you can't really just say 20 ohms because obviously it depends on whether you've got one little LED lamp turned on or it's like a in sort of commercial installation and there's like a load of, say, 600 amps going through there. So, yeah, it, it depends entirely on the installation. Hmm. So just going back to Mark, Mark, this document, Google. Over the last two months, I have been Googling every day and going into the networks and all the rest of it, downloading this. And this document was um, a background of a change proposal. And as part of it, they actually requested, um, this is 2013, labelling of PME supplies. So after 2013 was when they introduced the labelling of, before then, there was no requirement to label as PME. What's it called, dude? What should you Google? Um, oh, blimey, sorry. Um, so the document is called... Off GEMS distribution code engineering recommendation G12 slash four requirements for the application of PME. 
a review of engineering recommendation. Uh, published 17th of January 2014 and it also references and makes recommendation to the working group known as the Wine Regulations Committee a number of changes. Um, but there you go. So fascinating. Honestly, when you go down this rabbit hole, chaps, it's uh, it's just wonderful. It's well, not wonderful. It's a brain melt. But um, I think I think the term sow the seed, let it grow, consider, think, debate, talk, and then go from there. Right. Let's move on. Yep, um, okay. Intake cupboard. This is a this is a again, it's, this is a DNO installation, but would be now considered BNO building network operator. Um, cut out is right at the bottom. And this is, well, I mean, it's just a fucking mess, isn't it, really? What would you code that? Look at it. Henny blocks hanging out the trunking. This has just been so badly altered and added to over the years. Probably meter operators, maybe you've done that. Maybe I'm, I'm but you've got. I'm assuming this is a location that is pretty much exclusive for them. Yeah. Oh, this is a lot room. It's in a lot because, room. Because, you know, they, they clearly don't give a crap. Well, you'd hope there's a lot room. You would, wouldn't you? Things like this in flats where the room is not locked and it's got push chairs and junk and all kinds of rubbish. Just Yeah, thrown. you get like a landlord area, yeah, which actually doesn't lock, and then they end up putting their buggies and stuff and their bikes in there, don't they? There's certainly a lot of junk in there. So there's a cable a, uh, under a joint. We'll that's a multi-switch on the uh, front corner of the picture there, not connected. That means probably someone's pulled it out of the uh, satellite system and it's broken. <laughs> Just to add to Mark while he's saying a call cable under a joint will never be tested. There is currently talk amongst the HSE and the DNOs because we are all taught that there should be a, an electrode at every single joint. What they're doing is putting coils of wire and calling it an electrode. Um, fine. Yeah, new, but new how that actually um, garners any real impedance sat underneath a torpedo joint is beyond me. Um, so I think that issue is going to debate on and on and on. Uh, you can probably tell I have done lots of talking to the DNOs about this. Um, only because of I'm working on some DNO uh, investigations at the moment for work. Yeah, good point. Uh, uh, it's um, likely public access due to key meters. Is there key meters? Oh, good spot. Yeah, well, they have to go in there, won't they, to Jesus top up their extra 15 quid a week? Wow. You could switch your neighbours off if they annoyed you. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Turn See, it off. Oh, Go yeah, on. that's a cluster of that's just that stupidity 101. That is that is absolutely insane. Normally, an enclosure like this, you would have it would be, yeah, surely not. Surely, you'd have like feeds, them isolators would feed right redhead cutouts, and then there'd be a box local to the flat or something with their yeah. meter in. This would be there's, a check meter, surely. That's how it should be done. There's definitely key meters there. They yeah. have. They've gone in and changed the check meters for key meters. Yeah, those those square white ones on the sort of far left there, and the one in the sort of middle picture. That's those are definitely key meters. There's five in there, I think. Can I give that a C one, please? Yes. Yeah. I was on C two until someone pointed out the key meters. I was like, oh shit, okay. And then... I was on C two until. <laughs> that's until a good point. <laughs> key meters, man. Yeah, the that... burden. Yeah. That whole lot one's ripping out and all the meters putting in the flats and all the distribution cabling replaced up to there. And eight, that's, that's like 20 grand's worth of work there for somebody if they want to. Uh, and the rest. Yeah. I charge yeah. them 45 just for the fun of it. Um, all right, so we've got 73% have gone C2, 22% have gone C1. Except maybe some of those C2s didn't think about the key meters. Probably would have done what we did. Yeah. Um, but yeah no, 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 old man, daddy, what's he'd be like C1, C1, C1. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on. Move on. Interesting one. Okay. Do you know, supply yeah, one then black ones one. again. That's not mine. I one I found anyway. The. Uh... Is that your one, John? Yeah. Well, it's not one I fitted, obviously, but it's one I've uh, stumbled across in the uh, like... daily rummaging. Go for it then. Go on, talk us through it. That is a smart meter, and it's notable how big some of these smart meters actually are they're actually bigger than the old mechanical ones that they've now replaced which is partly why they've done this thing where you're supposed to put it in a specific place yeah so we've got 16 millimeter tails there and they go down in there and they go inside the cavity wall and then the consumer unit is on the other side of the wall as built it's actually uh, quite a common arrangement and the, the problem here is you can look at what's in the cavity now, because, of course, originally the cavity was empty when it was constructed sort of 30 years ago. 
and subsequently somebody has come along and injected those insulation beads into the oh. wall cavity. Yeah, those new innovations to lower our energy um, losses and potentially set fire to every building. Yeah, and how many pictures do we have on our Instagram page alone of boards that are filled with those beads? It's mind-blowing. Yeah. Are they single insulated cables, John? No, they are the uh, insulated and sheathed type. So. Okay. But, uh, yeah, they're 16, which is obviously a bit on the small side. But It's an interesting earthing configuration because the side of the cutout, you can see, is, is insulated. Yeah, Where no, we had a, yeah. a block exposed... They've obviously changed it over time, and that's insulated, but you've got two earthing connections There's there. two conductors there. Mm. So it's evidently PME. Um, it's on a red face, so it's obviously a PME on a new estate, telling somebody it's on the red face, which is what they used to do. Um, but maybe that's a local electro. Maybe that's the end of line. Say, is this face. another end of line one? Of line. No, it isn't, actually. Okay. It's, uh, no. What that is is the, the thin one is the earth to the consumer unit. And then the bigger one is to the gas meter, which is fairly adjacent as well. So, oh, there you go. Okay, Again, it's, it's an older one that had a six millimeter when it was fitted, which was compliant. I just stuffed it in there. Do those two conductors out. fit nicely in that terminal? I didn't oh. look. Probably not, particularly because they're both different sizes. So there's going to be. I'm gonna say, yeah. I should imagine there's a couple of strand clippings maybe there. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably, yeah, well, hey, who's ever heard of reduction lugs? Um, haircut, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no main earth terminal as well. Yeah, I would suggest there needs to be an insulated Henley there. I would probably ditch that and put that into a Henley and then take that one. Yeah, that's just, yeah. So I would then, and, you know, and I'd label the, the gas and the earth separately. Just so did it. you see one it, John? See one? No, that wasn't a see one. That was a, uh, that was an FI, I think, came on that one, so. Maybe. Okay, does uh, everyone agree? Uh, we have got C2, 56%. And I guess this is on the assumption of the loading um, yeah. and the risk of the, uh, the derating factors of the insulating material, I expect. Mm. We've got 6% uh, C1, 14% yeah. C3, 25% FI, which is what you did, John. Yeah. See, I'm um, sitting on a C3. Is the FI, John, because you want to then observe the demand? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's only a, a fairly small house and all the heating was gas, so the actual right. the total load isn't likely to be particularly excessive. But the other unknowns here is what rating is the fuse in that cutout? Mm -hmm. There's, say, 16 mils. So you've got 16 uh, mils there, don't, so you, yeah, you may not have. A 60 or amp fuse or something, well, it doesn't actually matter. But it all, there's quite a lot of sort of unknowns here. And then there's obviously the cables up in the cavity, which may or may not be damaged, overheating. Who knows? Yeah. Cause so... Not, in, in this case, if I can't see the fuse, is that an FI or is that an operational limb? Could be either. Because an FI would be unsatisfactory. Yeah, limitations generally, because in most cases, you can't, unless you're going to hook the seals off, you're not going to see the fuse no. rating. So most okay. of these, certainly domestic ones, go down as a, a limitation for the fuse. Cool. Mainly because what else are you going to do? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, don't you? Everyone said C2, C2. I'm, I'm C3, by the way. I'm going to argue with John and say it just requires improvement. Just requires improvement. Um, I would carefully observe the utilisation. Uh, John said that there's no electric heating. It's not a large house. I should imagine subsequently till the next period of inspection and testing, there's probably little to no cause for, cause for concern. So I might be okay with the C3. Yeah, I'm never having a smart heater in my home. It really depends on that. It would be a C3 to a C2 on that, um, which you could basically mean could be an FI because I want to look at mm -hmm. the use of the system. Fair enough. I'd have a smart fuse board. I'd have a smart boiler, but I wouldn't have a um, smart meter in my home. Next. Radio. Right, this one. Uh, this was in a flat that I lived in for about three years. And this was in the on the ground floor, and the flat was like on the second floor. So this is the cutout, the meter, and the uh, connection via that uh, thing in the middle, which went upstairs two floors to the ancient uh, Wilex fuse box that was in the flat. And it's another one of these 40 amp meters, which uh, obviously isn't particularly uh, adequate for much these days. So. 
fairness, John, you could have done a better job clipping the pyro, couldn't you? Mm. And we've got our lovely 951 clamp on the... Uh, a 951 clamp, yeah. It was allowed. It was fine <laughs> at the time. Leave <laughs> it alone. Well, that meter is 1968, so uh, yes, it definitely would be. Is that, I can't see, is that a fuse? No, it's not, is it? No, it's not a fuse, no, it's, it's just, just a neutral a connection. connection. It's just a neutral connection. So we've got what looks like a TNS supply with a couple of bits of green and yellow. Evidently, an electrician has installed that. Cause... Uh, am, I, am I right in that the green has just gone behind the board and coming back through the board? Yes. That's it. just, right, it's just disappeared Somebody tried to me. be smart. Okay. Someone's been clever. And... Why they did it, I don't know. It's only like two inches below. I was going to say, it's just like, it's just there. Yeah, it, so... it goes in that hole and then comes out underneath and goes onto the... Uh... But here's the point. Now it's disappeared from inspection view. Do you now have to test it for continuity? Mm. And you know? there's actually on that bottom bit, there's actually two clamps on the outer of the cable there because there's the one at the, the, the solid green, which is mm. like a copper one underneath. And then you've got the 951, which has been put in sort of partially over the top with that. Oh, yeah. You can see there is two there. different. there is two different types of clamp on that. And so what's the other green and yellow doing? Is that a local bond? I can't remember. I don't think so, because all the services were upstairs, and the gas meter was upstairs as well. Wait a minute. John Ward lived here. Yeah. yeah. Did you do that? No, I didn't do that. <laughs> oh, nearly. We nearly had him, folks. <laughs> we nearly had some lash-ups with John Ward's name on it. This was a rented flat where the landlord uh, was absolutely oh, yeah. useless and never did any inspections or any work on it whatsoever. He didn't need to. He had a bloody electrician living in his flat. <laughs> Go on, John, you can do that. Right, so what's everyone coding this then? Um, We've got C2. So I do love Pyro on this one. Uh, is, this, is this in a, a um, enclosed area, a cupboard, or what, where was this? No, this was literally by the front door on the ground level. So you open the front door, and this was basically under the stairs just behind it. So no cupboard, completely accessible to anybody who opened the front door. And... Okay. If you See, put your this, uh, I'm thinking, stuff in there, it could bash into it and break bits. And I'm thinking C3 here, but the, the the pyro and the fragility of it and children and all the rest of it, I'd probably see to it just based on that I'm, pyro. I'm on the same ballpark. I'm looking at that pot. I'm looking at the yeah, cables the coming out. I'm thinking a bang or two on that. I don't I have a 40 I'd... amp for anti-meter as well. Yeah. Okay. Southern electricity board. Yeah, they don't make meters like the Eastern one did. We've gone fifty percent C two, thirty one percent have gone C three, and sixteen have gone F I. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. Yeah. So, yeah, the whole. I'm I'm, I'm on a C three C two, but then when I hear about the, the 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 you know the accessibility to the public and that pop and it is fragile, as Paul said, a couple of a couple of whacks on that push me over C two into C two. Yeah, so well, this is it completely accessible because the the flat was above some shops. And this was basically on the ground floor. So there was a door which went straight out into the street. You open the door, this is inside. And there's just a set of stairs go up to the flat where there's another door which goes into the flat. And that's where the uh, fuse box was. So. Yeah. Daniel says, I'm not a fan of that part. Literally just a bit of putty and a crimped cap. Technically, he's correct. It's just, yes. that's all it is. So here's one for you, gents. I'm going to throw something at you. Um, according to the cutout guidance note for EV installers, that cutout is circa is a black plastic uh, circa 1960 to 1990s. If an installer is presented with this type of cutout, um, they must assume the fuse size is 60 amps. Um, if the installation designer's calculations confirm the installation total will not exceed 60 amps, there is no need for an, a DNO assessment, and the EV install can proceed as appropriate. So do you think electricians, now electricians are being asked on EICRs to assess the condition, do you think they need access to that kind of information where they've got yeah, so what illustrations we'll of, of this, different cutouts and what we should assume of them yeah. from certain guides? Dave, what we'll do at the end of this is I'll quickly close this um, and I'll, open, I'll share the document on my screen hmm. that I've got with the guides to cutouts so that people can download it, they can print it off. And it goes through every type of cutout available, including maybe some some ones that John Ward may have. Because um, <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, you know, we go, what view should that be? Oh, it should be. But if we've got a standard that goes, this should have this, then we can go with that information. Fun enough, I'm looking at... They didn't even take your copyright off the photo, John. No, they just blatantly... Right, we'll definitely show that one then. Right, okay. So we've got a gift for you at the end of this. Right, so what's everyone said on the um, scoring? 
Uh, all right, this this was uh, C2. Yeah, I think some common C3, sense. C3, 31, 16% was FI, um, pretty much in the same okay. area. Probably right. still there. This was 15 <laughs> years ago. This was taken, so uh, who knows? Oh, what's this installation. One? Yeah, so this identify is the one. supply type. This is a GRP cutout. It is a brand new concentric cable, three phase isolator. Um, can anybody see any issues with it? Other than obviously the supply type, is there anything else you can spot? This is a good Using spot. Using two issue. phases? Yeah, look carefully at what's look actually carefully. connected to what here, because uh, it's not what you might assume it is straight away. Damn you, John. Right, go on, John, you can... But nothing, one, one face coming out. John? Go on, John. Yes, this, uh, this might look like a three-phase supply, and it is a three-phase cut out there on the cable, which goes back to another thing, which isn't in this picture. But uh, three-phase meter, notice there's only two of the phases connected. The middle one doesn't have any wiring attached. Mm -hmm. So we've got two phases coming out, going into that meter. And then to go into the isolator, you see there's only the two left phases connected, and the neutral, obviously. And then on the top of it, despite it being a three-phase supply, allegedly, we're only actually connecting a single phase to the... Uh, distribution board which is on the right out of the picture so this is actually a two-phase supply and the reason it's a two-phase supply is because the supply from the street is defective and this was only discovered after the building had been mostly constructed and the cables had been installed under the ground and all the rest of it so what the DNA has actually done is where it comes into the main distribution cupboard which is one of those things with the J type fuses in it they've basically linked the red phase that comes into two of those and the blue phase to the remaining one and there is no yellow phase on the old colours. It just doesn't exist. So it was all set up for three phase when it was built but they've got basically two phases to use and that's your lot. And because of this, which isn't in this picture, the lift in this block of flats is a three phase lift and it actually runs off of a phase converter connected to one of the phases because they haven't got three phases available. So there's a dog's dinner for you. Mind blown. And this, the lift is, the phase conversion in the lift is very interesting because trying to run a three phase lift and it's about a, a 16 or 17 kilowatt lift mm. running off of a phase converter. So you can just imagine the starting current off of the single phase when that thing switches in it's somewhere i think the peak current is something about 120 amps when the lift actually starts and this is on a 100 amp supply so uh, yes it's a complete and utter disaster it's a mess and they had a quote from the dno to fix this problem they said that if you wanted the three phases from the street that it involved digging up most of the street for several hundred meters to replace all the cabling and the figures were sort of five digits plus. And they're suggesting that was the client's expense, not yep. their own. And then there was <laughs> another quote got where they could bring a supply in from the road over the other side, which would involve going across someone else's property. And that came out about a similar figure. Sort of 20, 30,000 quid was uh, figures that were thrown Pretty about. Cheap. So needless to say, it wasn't done. And it's now two phases. And unfortunately, the flats that are on the same phase as the lift, the lights go quite dim when the lift starts. So, no surprise. No surprise there. And there's, I think it's 11 flats in this building, and they've got basically two of the three phases kind of distributed between them in a not very even fashion. Bit of a mess. And it's PME as well. Yeah, I was going to say, first oh. question is, is what supply type is it? It's PME and, and God forgive whoever used that insulating tape around that cable. They just, uh, just sickens me to my stomach that. Um, that earth bar looks like it's seen better days as well. It looks a bit rusty and corroded. Mm -hmm. um, but the one, I think one of the lessons learned here, John, as well is, is I mean, I, um, in recent times, I've gone into three phase installations, looked at the head and assumed it was three phase and then looked closer and then gone, hang on a minute, what they've done is they've swapped the cables out of the meter into different terminals on the top of the fuses and doubled up on some of the fuses because they had a network problem. And I mm. have seen installations for years that there was a fault on the cable in the street. They've gone into the connected load building, 
they've swapped, say, the yellow phase onto the blue phase, doubled up them terminals, fixed the repair in the road, couldn't get back in and have left it. So it's another thing we need to consider when working on three phase DNO heads. Um, it's, it's not just a simple issue anymore. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're covering this is those who think it is, I, I would respectfully very much disagree. So do you want me to run a poll on this? Um, and if you do, do we take the information John's given us or just... Yeah, go on, in, we, run a poll. Or with what we see on, only? Uh, no, just, you know what, run this one a poll based on what you... I'd be interested to see what people think. Hmm. And bear in mind, I mean, John did say that the lights are flickering and stuff when the lift is in use and things. Yeah, yeah uh, John Ward, by the way, um, he he's coded that as run. He invented a new coding system mm. for it. Yeah, the lift, unfortunately, is one of these hydraulic jobs, which means when it goes up, all the weight of the lift is yeah. on the hydraulic thing. But when it comes down, there's pretty much no load at all because it's just under gravity. So uh, not a particularly good thing, but it appears that whoever built the place assumed that three phase was available, all the three phase to put in, and then it was only discovered when it was making the final connection in the street that, oh, actually, no, there's only two phases here, so. Wow. So it's been lashed together with a phase converter. I don't know why the network operators were not held accountable by, by somebody, probably because the owner of the building didn't have the intelligence or the time That's... to actually confront them. Well, there's well, a bit more to the story because yeah. the owners of the building didn't finish it. They actually went out of business before they managed to complete the building. So someone else was called in to finish the building and they did it as quickly and cheaply as possible because they weren't getting any money out of it. And then shortly after that, they went out of business as well. So uh, lots of stuff in this building is kind of sort of lashed together, thrown in at the last minute and not really done to. So the mor been. moral of the story is lash it in and go out of business. Sounds yeah. like the DNO got away with it. Looks like it. Yeah. Okay. So we have got a 44% C2. 25% C3, 28% FI. So that's interesting. Um, good, good poll. It's a good spread. It's, um, again, when you're talking about the use of a system, if you've got people in the home and the lights aren't, you know, reliable, then I can see how you can easily C3 that or FI that. Um, C2, if that lighting does create, you know, if the absence of or is it just lighting that's affected? There's it's nothing basically else? lighting. It's just if the lights are on in the flat, they know mm. when the lift is used because it dips for a minute and then goes back. So it's not. What you're recommending, John, is don't go there for Christmas Day. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Right. It is gas heating in the flats, but uh, even so, it's a it's a pretty much of a disaster because it was designed for a three phase distributed well, enough, 11 flats. And funny enough, I think Dave, we're going to maybe cover gas heating systems in the next webinar. In some form or another, it will be there. Maybe. Um, right, here's one of my personal collection. Um, this is my favourite DNO intake of all time, because is that, this... is that the is that as close as you could get to it? Yes. Right. Okay. Um, it was a DNO where um, basically it was a refurbishment of a London Underground station, and a brand new panel was put in front of the old DNO intake. And I just thought, well, that's great because the DNO came to disconnect this and couldn't find it for all the tea in China. And it bugged the hell out of me. And I found it. And then later on, I found the meter and all the tails um, strewn across a, um, a storage area. And that bad boy just left in that condition. Um, so um, the, the lesson learned from this photo, and I wanted to show it because it's a great one, is always look behind <laughs> massive panels. You never know when you're going to find a DNO in somewhere. <laughs> Um, I wouldn't code it because obviously, as you can see, it was um, rip redundant and all sealed up and stuff like that. But um, it's just one of them weird, weird stories I thought I'd just throw in as a have a look. Um, it's just mad. Just I've, I've got pictures of fuse boards that are literally hanging onto cable ties. And is it energized? Sorts of, uh, that supply is, yeah. The intake is. Um, but it's obviously nothing connected to it anymore. And there was a new power supply going, a new panel, and they just pushed the panel up against the DNO head. It's insane mm. what some projects do. Major projects that we're talking about, idiots. Um, but yeah, just if anybody's ever looking for a DNO head, sometimes on commercial industrial, think outside the box, look behind the panels. You never know. Mm. 
And um, we're not going to code this. We're going to move on because this was a story. Now, this is a good one. This is a lighting um, feeder pillar, including spiders. Um, kind of tried to dramatic. I, I, I hate these new cameras with the four thingies because they're, I don't know if you've noticed, but photos are getting skinnier and longer. So if you're ever going to send us photos, please tilt them horizontally like you would on TV. Um, so you've got a supply there. Some um, concentric cores coming out to an earth terminal. Um, yeah, so if you were if you were new to the lighting industry um, and you were going out and, and looking at some of these feeder pillars, what supply would you uh, assign to that? And would, if any, would you would you code that? With all the spiders. So just have a look in the chat. That is an absolute abhor. Is he talking about this one? Vault drop with additional cast. Um, TNS. 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 Let's have a look at my. Did you want to run a poll on this one or just. Just, I'm more interested to see what the comments are. Just let, let, if there are people can let us know in the comments, I'll skim through my little. Um, my little document of doom while um, if I had a little bit more time, it would have been included, but then it would be about 10 hours long. See if there's anything like this. Lo and behold, there isn't. Yeah. The question here is whether that's concentric cable or split concentric cable. Mm. How can we tell? Well, without ripping it open. Uh, <laughs> that's the thing. These concentric cables can trick us up, can't they? There is, um, funnily enough, there is guidance now on what constitutes them. Um, in Again, available for the DNO. I, I have never been so blown away as to how um, much information is provided by the by the DNO. It's incredible. To be fair, mate, it's, um, we have this discussion regularly about why don't the standards free, why aren't the standards free, why aren't they available? And we go, well, they are in Dubai, they are over here, they are over there. So it shouldn't be surprising that another area of industry such as DNO does so completely the opposite to what we do and makes them free. It shouldn't be a yeah, surprise. Very true. I think there is debates at the moment going on about whether standards should be free or not. I think there is a public duty of care being breached by not making them free. Yeah, Personally, um, some, some, I, it's the one thing that I would happily go to prison over um, because uh, to me, I think it's completely unethical to sit millions of pounds worth of mm. safety standards behind a paywall. I think it's a national but disgrace. If they are made free, we'll have to immediately do a crowdfunder and raise some money for Dave Betteridge, apparently, because he spent a fortune on his. Oh, sorry, Dave. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> well, yeah, if I didn't have if I didn't have a BSI online account, yeah. luckily my company pay for because I got IHS as well, which gives you. So I, this is really sad. Today, I actually um, got a copy of the New Zealand wine regulations. Uh, and the one thing I loved was the committee that wrote the New Zealand wine regulations are all trade um, uh, electrician associations. There's virtually no manufacturers on it. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. All right. Paul's got a fly. See you, Paul. Not you, Paul. Other Paul. Paul. Okay. Paul Buritan's got to go. Um, right. So this, um, this is actually a PME. PME. Yes, PME. And how so did you get that chap, from that? The... the chap who sent it to me told me. So mm -hmm. he sent it to me on Instagram. Um, this is a PME supply um, for a lighting column feeder. And at the end of the lighting column circuit, they have a, a separate earth electrode. Um, it's not the way it should be done. Um, basically, what they've done is they've taken the armoring there, they've separated it, bent it down, and put it into an earth terminal. Yep. What they should have done is actually put the earth connection directly into that neutral there. That would have been a lot more easier to identify then, wouldn't it? Yes. This is, this is the problem. Uh, the, uh, configuration is in the eye and the competence of the jointer or the person putting the cutout. And they're all different. Mm. Um, and this is one of the problems, really. So what would we code that? The fact of the matter is that's, that's exposed. That, all of that is, is right. a technically neutral conductor. All right. So now we know that, do you want me to run the poll? Yes, please. Okay. Right, so let's expose live conductors. Why don't they ever label or ID anything? As I said, it's only since 2013 that they've been told to. But Ofchem are the regulator and they care more about unit rates of energy than what the DNOs do. Do you know, if anyone watches this from the DNOs, they're going to go ape. Think about, how dare they? How dare they? How dare they criticise us? Yeah. And we're entitled to our engineering views. Yep. Well, we got on the poll. All right, we've got 
Uh, let me get 70%. There you go. 70% have voted. We've got... <clears throat> 61% went with C1. 32% went with C2. So, what's your thoughts on this, son? Um, finishing is a C1. Um, yeah. It's, is this enclosed? What am I looking at here? It's a, 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 it's basically a lighting feeder pillar, but it's one. It's a concrete one. There okay. are some concrete ones out, not not metal ones. Now, the reason being is why? Because if you look at a lot of the PME guidance, it states do not use metal, metal. feeder pillars. So a lot of them are brick or GRP now. A lot of the modern ones are GRP. Mm. If you have a metal feeder pillar and it's a PME supply, you should be putting a local electrode near to it. Yeah. Um, it's a big it's, exposed conductive part, isn't it? Mm, well, it's been banned on railways. PME has been banned and metal boxes have been banned since 2011. Um, we know that this knowledge of PME risk is probably at least 20 years old. It's just um, it's everywhere but in our industry everywhere yeah, but our right. book yeah 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 which is fair to say. crazy fair to say i don't think it will be for much longer no. i think it will be in our book um mm. eventually um so there you go this was actually what happened after oh hang on oh you've got the uh the after. The after okay stop sharing there you go that was what happened afterwards left the earth bunch of lazy bastards <laughs> but they did exactly what they should do Changed it, put a proper cut out in, insulated. This is one of the good ones that I've got a before and after of. Mm. Um, I was desperately trying to find more of, but yeah, so that was that was the after of reporting it to the DNO and them coming out and someone competent going, yes, that should be enclosed within an insulated cutout, a GRP one, They're not plastic, the GRP. Not so, right. Yeah, I thought that was a great example of an after. This is an interesting one. Um, I don't know why there are two pictures. So it's probably me screwing up here, but let's just look at the picture on the right. Well, actually, no, do you know what? We can look at both, actually. Obviously, a really dodgy supply um, where someone has drilled holes to access the screw terminals. So that evidently isn't an authorised DNO cutout. Um, but more importantly, the one on the right, that's, what, that's inside one of those black cuts with a PME link. So that's actually the link that you can connect or disconnect to make it either a TNS or a PME. So it's one of them rare insights um, that you can you can see. Now that's obviously you can see on the bottom. Let's just concentrate. We're not going to code both of them. Yep. The one on the right. So you can see there's those weird clamp things on again what looked like an armoured. They've then obviously double insulated, split out the line and neutral conductors, and then just linked across to the earth terminal on that block. So, and that block has obviously been exposed. These would be quite familiar to a lot of people. I think it's fair to say there's a good few million of these. Where so, without, the with, so with this lid on to the electrician, yes. this looks like a TNS. Yes. Because you've got that braid there. But when you take it off, you can see there's that link. So it's a PME. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked on a lot of these for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, these used to confuse the hell out of me until somebody actually, I went on the training and somebody said that cutout can be used for TNS, but it can also be used for PME. It all depends on if they have a separate earth cable that comes up on the right, which as you can see, they did. Look, you can see from, am I pointing out on my screen? You can see here the green coming off the armor, coils round in a helix, goes up into the earthing stud for the earth connection. So naturally you could assume it's still a TNS with just a facility of an earth terminal built in. But that link now makes it a PME. This is, this is the, another reason why it's so important to engage with the DNO. The biggest problem is, and everyone watching this, is the DNOs are just awful. They're yeah. terrible. In the comments, it's not, uh, the holes are not drilled in apparently. There's a, uh bung or plastic cover that goes over those that's a cloverleaf shaped hole you're mm. joking apparently really that's what several people have said there so i oh my god well that's definitely that can't be a dno one because it's not in any of their manuals anywhere that would be yeah okay that's definitely not a dno cutout. i can't see that being an approved method of connection or 
Um, but it was one that got sent into us and I just thought it was just mind blowing because I've never seen one in, in 20 odd years of looking at this and studying this. And this is in none of the manuals whatsoever. Mm. Trust me, I've got them all sitting on the floor. Um, I've, I've one... seen, I've seen cutouts with a bung on them, but I've never removed it to see underneath them. So I guess that's what that is. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Um, but yeah, that one on the right, I think is the main one for me that's quite important is that connection there there are millions of these i've worked on so many installations mm. where i've connected into that terminal not realizing or thinking that there could easily be a link inside i don't but know you see me i've always defaulted that they are pme because they're next to the neutral they're on there with the neutral um but i've seen dave but... separate earth wires mm. that have come in literally separately all the way along and into that side connection Mm -hmm. I've also seen inside these when I was working on them, because I have worked on them when I've done like new meter connections and renewed all the tails and stuff where that link isn't in. And, and that's, that's the fascinating part about these intakes and this whole DNO mystery is how much do we actually know about the supply configuration that's coming in? Because okay. the theory of what so we should see. Let's say, let's say that I've got what I've got that the covers on and the link is out I could do yep. testing. To, I can do a continuity testing between the neutral incomer, yeah, you can. isolated, you can. and the earth. Uh, if I have continuity, then I have my PME. If I don't, then I do. Yep. And then I have TNS. So just an extra step. That would be an FI in that case. Oh, Dave, that could be the that could be in a webinar called The Hidden Test that BS7671 doesn't <laughs> another, tell us to do. Another one, yeah. Can we go back to that previous lighting pillar? Because apparently... Um, that's Which one, mate? Sorry, cut out in there. Yeah, that's the same one with the, the black cover on it. Yeah. Oh. So it's the same picture. It's the same cutout style. That's got the cover in and the. Um... I thought that was a. I thought that was a bug. <laughs> so apparently, that's the, uh, the plug that should. Is be that there. genuinely an actual car? Oh, Is mother a, of God! I, I used to call it a butt plug or something when I was on the um, tools. Call it a plug. I've never seen that cut out no. and I've seen virtually every single type. I've never seen that one before. So this is great because I'm learning something on this webinar, which is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, if that's a DNO cut out, I would like to meet the drug addict who designed that. That's a definitely a weird one. It is crazy. I can see why they've designed it. It's minimal access to live conductors. I get it. Totally get it. But you know, uh, the old cutouts were far better at actually minimizing access. And so I don't know why they keep redesigning these cutouts to be perfectly frank. Yeah, it's a Lucy one, apparently, according to Daniel Casey. There's a link Dave, in did you comments. just say butt plug? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that ain't pitch that's melting. That's a g Oh, dear. Dave lowering the tone. Right, next one. Did we did we code that, by the way? Did everyone code that? No. I don't think we will. We're just. It's a talk. It's a debate piece. Let's not code that one. That's just a, did you know? These are kind of the insights into DNOs. That we may not be aware of um here's another one um mm -hmm. it's quite an interesting one actually to be honest with you it's um again this is my apologies um i ended up chucking a load of photos in slides so this may not make any sense now because i had like a hundred slides and i had to just go mad redacting this um 100 amp fuse earthing terminal pme quite a large hefty chunky 35 boy, isn't he? going in he is a big boy isn't he? the earth's bigger than the bloody neutral pretty much um, yeah, it is um, going into an isolator. Um, is that holes drilled on the side there? Of the car? On that the looks like that's been chewed on like hole. Yeah, They're not very regular, are they? So they uh, they might be holes in yeah. that case. But... Somebody's attempted to drill holes in there. Would you, would, you, would you code that piece of equipment? On the right-hand side, by the way, everyone's wondering, that's just another lighting feeder pillar. Um, single core conductors coming out of the cutout. Um, and the volt stick to just prove that they're obviously still energized. Um, but let's stick with one on the left because it's DNO intakes we're coding. Um, would you code that? It looks, so it's a PME, it looks like someone's maybe tried to see if there's connections on the right by drilling holes to see if there's bloody terminals there. Yeah. And then, and then, and then having figured out there aren't, they've taken it off and then put it next to the neutral. Or yeah, they've just cut it off and realized it slots out, un unplug the fuse and slide it yeah. out. Because these, you can, isn't it? You, you, you just slightly pull the fuse, there's no seal on it, and then you can just slide, you can pop it off, can't you? Ventilation. Um, the <laughs> Ventilation. Are now going downhill, by the way. They're talking about butt plugs and gimp suits. 
So um, if you're watching this on YouTube, there is some hilarity on the, um, the comments that you're not going to see, thankfully. Um, there's the old MEM, 100 amp isolators. They were a miracle when they came out. A, they're electrician's best friend. You couldn't get them quick enough. No, Anyone who worked in electricity boards, if you got any of them isolators, they were mm. flying off the shelves. Um, would you code the intake? I would, um, I'd, to be honest, I'd see three that. And then the holes are obviously not supposed to be there, so they certainly yes, would require the mm. replacement. So. Run a poll, see what everyone thinks. All right, run a poll. Mm -hmm. Right, so this is for the left image, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Dave Fault, um, I wonder if the DNO specified that 16 mil earth. Yes, they have. If you're talking about the main earth connection, yes. Uh, minimum, minimum. So which minimum? But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna see through it because I can't see any shiny copper parts. I can't really stick my finger in it. No, it looks to me like um, there's nothing there, and that's what that's a, done, literally a three or four mil hole. Mm. I probably see three as well. I love that big main earth, beautiful and big. Absolutely. In fairness, on my old house, I think my earthing conductor on my TNS supply is thirty-five mil. <laughs> oh no, it's terrible, isn't it? It's just awful. All right, yo, seventy-seven percent voted, so we'll end on that one. And we've got eighty percent have gone C three. Mm. Eleven percent went C two. Yep. Two people went F five, one person went C one. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing sort of immediately dangerous there. That's not sort of live bits exposed. So. No. Most no. so. likely, they just click the C one to make the thing disappear from their screen. Now this is the this is the luckily the the we're coming towards the end. So don't don't go yet because you're going to miss the really controversial bit. Is um, there an end? Yes, there is. There is an end. The end. There mm. is an end. So this is the last of the coding slides. Okay. Um, you've got a brand new Lucy um, cutout. Uh, so those cutouts have at least two to four hundred amp um, supply fuses in them. But we have this lovely, beautifully shite lash up on the. Shite. It is. It, that's the only words I can use because you've got. Look at it. You've got a free face supply coming out here with the red single cores. That old mm -hmm. DNO supply that they've reconnected back into a new intake. From the new intake, they then bought a larger single core into what looks like small torpedo joints, and then have probably just through jointed that onto something that goes into what looks like some sort of weird ducting. And off and away. And then obviously you've then got the PME, you've got a PME terminal on the right here. You've then got a separate conductor here. And then you've also got another terminal here. It's a bit of a mess. That is shit. That's that for sure. Shit, isn't it? It's just shit. Absolutely no whoever did that, mm. honestly, no freaking pride whatsoever. <clears throat> we need a JS code introduced. J -S. Just shit. We will put it in part two. Mm. We will do a part two on this and we'll have a JS code. C3 can do one and we'll put JS in. I think, again, this is all our opinion, everybody, so please don't hate us on YouTube. Um, all right, let's log to Paul and Sue. What do, we, what do we think it is supply wise? Because normally on these sorts of things, you do see um, earths coming in from the joints, but I'm naturally assuming that cable there is coming up underneath going into the joint but then again you've got earth conductors going round so there you go you can see that conductor there goes around the bottom and up into that insulated earth terminal there probably to facilitate these you then got this as a separate conductor coming in and coming off then we've got so that one that, that one that one bends and goes up with the header doesn't it mm. that bigger one that one yeah is it tns is it pme it's been recently done and considering that they're supposed to be labeling this up, but you and I both know, Dave, the DNOs to this day, their operatives, if they're changing something in the street, they still don't go in and change the supply intake. No. We'll cover that on part two. Part two will have a very specific reason and dynamic around it. Because um, I think we will do it because we've got some great installation pictures which we can put in as far as this is a, and it's actually not. 
Um, but yeah, what do we think? What does everyone think, coding wise and supply type wise? <clears throat> Okay, yeah, I looking... noticed that green and yellow tape and the wires in the trunk in. That's from a council block of flats, absolutely. Yeah, and was the old intake buried in the wall at the bottom of the grey ducts and trunk in? Well, fairly likely, yeah, it was probably higher up and it may well have just joined straight onto the uh, bottom of it there where the gap is. Mm. And they've fitted that, so it's a new piece of chipboard or whatever behind there, so they've just sort of bridged over the hole and put the new one on the front. Yeah. So it, look, it looks to me like that larger earth cable is going up into the header with it, isn't it? So, yes. I mean, we can't see underneath that. No. Nope. So it's coming off, oh, it's God. going around, it's bolted on the side. So, and that cable's going to be too large to be wetted on or anything. So, it's wetted on. So, so this kind of one of the things, this is kind of my bug, my gripe for the, for the session. If you are going to send photos or take photos for people to code, try and get some close ups but also try and step back as far as you can so that we can ascertain horizontally the layout, the configuration, where it's coming through the floor, the whole routes of the cables. I get sent loads and loads and loads of pictures and I can't use them mm. because there's just not enough in there to actually I, tell me. This larger earth cable, I, I want to see underneath that header to actually see if it's yeah, I know. sweated on or if it's just disappearing. No, I think it's, it's I, I would more than likely assume that goes into a duct with that supply cable but then again so that cable there that's likely looks to like be... it's connected to that cable yeah. so that could be a bonding conductor for all we know that could be a gap water bonding mm. what do we think so, the supply head is because if you look at the wiring regulations we should be able to easily ascertain <laughs> the dno connections if you ask me to code right now i'll be f5 because i want to look further to find out the earthing system I can't. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm with you totally on this, Dave. This is an FI period. On that one, in in my view, yes. There's, there's some lash ups with the cables some, the trunking. And... Yeah, the cables, trunkings, and stuff. That's a separate observation. Those are C2s. Yeah. Uh, but there's an FI with regards to identifying the earthing system on this one. Yeah. For me. And the joints are a JS code. I think we're all agreed. It's a just shit. Just shit, Kyle. And if that's an approved DNO method, then the DNO seriously need to really consider what approved is because that's just pants the thing is i mean so this is just i mean uh, do, do you know the background of this is this just a new supply refeeding old yeah there's, there's a new supply that came in and i got sent it on a message saying this is for you this would be interesting one for for your webinar okay but, i mean those 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 cables could have easily been terminated into something a lot more suitable than that there you go matt hailstone i'll try and get a better photo next time he's there next week there you go matt awesome. Um, if you can, we'll include this again next week on the webinar again so we can talk about this because this is a cracking one. Um, yeah, but yeah, like if you can one. get more photos. Yeah, definitely. But the thing is, you imagine being a Sparks walking in on that by yourself, on your Jack Jones. Play, get the keys, open the door, you look in and you just go... Well, that's oh. one of those moments where you go, you open the door, you go, oh, for oh, fuck's no. sake. No, it's just one of those God. moments. Why me? Why yeah. me? What the hell is this mess? How do I report this? I wanted to get home early today. This ain't happening. Just um, pretend so it was locked. What's everyone coding that as then? Because well, we've gone C two fifty percent. What's the rest? FIs. FI is thirty percent. I'm on. I'm with FIs on identifying the FI system. C three is a ten percent. Ten percent C ones. So I'm going to go with the, either C two or FI. I think would be really good. Mm -hmm. um, C three, yeah, definitely. I, I can't. That's the beauty of some of these codes. It does require improving, without a doubt. Um, but we need to analyze, yes, it requires improvement to what regulations, or is there a potential danger there? Or do we just need to investigate further first um, before we fail that installation? And I think more time and effort and energy needs to be tracing those earth cables. So if you're with a customer, it's, look, I'm failing the installation based on the fact I need more time to ascertain and verify the configuration and the bonding set up and the earthing set up. And by the way, I need to contact the DNO and inform them that this is shite. Yeah. I basically. mean, those, those, those earth cables need to be tied up and labeled. Yeah. Cause this could have been a, this could have been a temporary. It almost looks like someone's wrapped it in a heat shrink bin liner. Um, <laughs> okay. Whatever was in the back of the van. Right. So just a quick one. So that's the end of the photos. I want to go through a few little bits of text if that's okay. And not lot, not many. So this is from the DNO intake document 26th of February. Domestic commercial and external intake position is the UK Power Networks. 
preferred option. So we've shown some meter boxes in this. And a lot of people on social media have asked the question, why do I have external meter boxes? I want why them inside the, the house. Yeah. So the reason being is, and this is in the standards that are publicly available, it reduces the risk from fire and complies with Southampton Coroner's Rule 43, which Dave, you have mentioned before on your webinars regarding <laughs> premature collapse, which is where the coroner can write and to various bodies yeah. and say, please improve. There's a recommendation dated 28th September to minimize the use of internal meter positions in domestic properties and prevent failure, personal injury and or fatalities. It's worth mentioning that we do see a lot and we've got an archive of them, which we can't make public, um, of DNOs that are catching fire. We do. Um, and, and this rule, you know, it, again, if you have a fire and a DNO is a cause, this will come up. We may get to a point in 10 years, 15 years where we start observing Oh, the intake is in the property? Recommend so, improvement. Question for everybody on the text chat. How many fires do you think there have been in the last 10 years around DNO intakes and metering? So that's just an open question. Just put a random number in there, yeah. like calling out lottery numbers. And not sparky thought for poor workmanship. Nothing to do with electricians. This is DNO stuff. Lots is not an answer. Um, <laughs> but it's a good good attempt. Right, so let me finish reading this. It removes the need to install UK Power Networks cabling in customer premises. Mm -hmm. It allows for 24-hour access to UK Power Networks and the meter operator, which has been known to be dangerous because the meter operators in about 20 years ago were quite naughty. They were going and pulling installations on full load, and there was an incident where somebody who was connected into some home uh, medical equipment nearly got killed because of it. Um, and it provides standard in minimum cost uh, solution. Um, oh, hang on. So therefore, all supplies domestic premises shall use an external meet position unless written approval from the director of asset management is obtained. So if you can get in touch with that person, in fact, I think in the next one, we'll put his details in his email. So if anyone wants to put a meter inside their house and you can guarantee LSOH this and, you know, talk to connections and all the rest of it and enclosures and then yeah, that's the reasoning. I thought it was a fantastic gem of knowledge to insert in here for your jobbing sparks and your electricians and your managers if you don't want to read through all the documents. Um, this is quite an interesting comment. Um, SNE services, so separate neutral and earth, what we know as PILC, paper insulated lead, TNS to sparks. Where a separate neutral earth is to be completely or partially replaced and the premises supplied has a cable sheath TNS earth terminal provided by UK power networks that includes the clamps by the way the customer shall be given the opportunity to have a PME earth terminal made available where practicable I wonder how many customers are spoken to by the DNOs and offered a PME earth terminal mm. because I'm pretty sure that number's zero yeah um, if this option we're given options everybody um, is chosen it will be necessary for the customer to arrange for their installation to be checked to ensure it's suitable for connection to a PME network. Really? Um, and for a new service cable to be installed by UK Power Networks. Okay, that's interesting. If the customer does not wish to adopt PME earthing, um, the existing single neutral earth and TNS may be retained. Are we ever given a choice? We never are, and yet they're going against their own standards. We're not consulted, we're not informed. We're not asked, by the way, I'm connecting you to a PME, so that six mil earth has now got to be a minimum 10 mil. Oh, and by the way, if you actually look at our standard, if it's the end of a branch, it's got to be 16 mil. Nobody ever asks us any of this. So this is where there is a good volume of knowledge available freely in the DNO. So wherever you live around the UK, I suggest as a piece of research, you go away and you read up on your local network stuff. Yes, look at energy networks but also look at your local network stuff. Um, I think I left this in because earthing, it was just, I think I left this in because this is left over from the last one. So apologies, but it's again, bonding of bonding. services, which may or may not be part of a future debate that we're going to have. Um, yeah, see some earthing slides. So I thought I'd, I'd, I'd also um, kind of last, in the last webinar, we kind of touched on some really controversial stuff didn't we at the end a picture of a few three phase cut out some fuses removed and still current so what i want to do is i want to play this video if if, if did if you have an answer me. about how many homes 
How many what? You asked chat about how many homes do you think fire, etc. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Well, while that video is playing, please enjoy the arcing of the video. Um, what have we got here? 155, 100, 600, 166, 166. I like what he did there. 10,224 a year. 6622 between 2000. I'd love to know where you're all getting your numbers from. I, I happen to know at one DNO there was about 159 um, within that space at that time because because we have photos of all of them. Um, but yeah, so you times that by 13 DNOs or the eight or whatever there is now, you're probably adding up to thousands. Daniel's just pasted a good block of text there 6622 oh, between God, 2011 and 2012 alone. Source ignition. Oh, wow. Called That's fire statistics. Well, you've, you've source just, you've, ignition, yeah. you, right. Can you email us that separately, Daniel? Because we'll add that. Um, forensics of sufficient resources to forensically investigate each fire a specific causation. Hence, many fires suspect to be electrical in origin and recording as appliance faults off gem. Oh, interesting. Okay. So for those watching on YouTube, um, Daniel Casey's put a really good bit of text in. Daniel, if you could send that to us, please. Um, I don't know if you can, you're can. you still watching the video on the screen, but the video shows a padlock. Uh, it's a phenomenon known as tracking. This is where um, neutral currents will um, just divert, common theme there, to various places, and you'll see visible arcing, sparking, and that's what you see on the padlock um, because that's a high impedance joint, but there was sufficient energy and voltage pushing that across. Um, should we end this with the video that we... Um, that should we just end it with the video? What do you think, Dave? Well, 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 I mean, if you wanted to, right. So, uh, for everyone watching on YouTube on demand, we're going to stop this now. Anything else to say to people on YouTube watching this, guys? Um, no, thank you very much There's for a couple watching. Of questions that uh, on the actual Q and A thing. Which, we answer uh, the questions on the now, so yeah, they're on the VOD. The uh, All right. The video bit at the end. So. Okay. I'll tell you what, yeah, okay, tell you what. Can you put a document on about the different cutouts you had? Yes, I'll tell you what, Dave, let's do this differently. And we're back in the <laughs> okay, room, everybody. In... So yeah. now we can talk about stuff. They leak voltage, indeed. They do, indeed. And uh, we've got an archive of fires that that's been the cause of. Now, can but... you see, can you guys see the cut, the, the document I've just put in front of the screen? Yes. Right, so it's now the uh, high level process for determining. Yeah, can you see that? Okay, great, cool. So this document here is the Energy Network Association Distribution Network Operator Cutout Types and Rating Guidance. It's to, uh, intended to assist um, EV charge point installers, basically. Um, and if I zoom out a little bit, it's got MOPCOA guides and all the rest of it. But what it does do is it's really nice. This is a great, if you've got an apprentice, this is a guide to help teach your apprentice what to look for in cutouts. So you then got the modern cutout, which is GRP. Wonder why? Hmm, phenolic. Mm. Um, and the installer must assume it's 60 amps. If it's uh, if the installation designer's calculation confirmed, then you've got black plastic, phenolic. Metal clad cutout, 1940s, 1960s. But what it does is it gives you advice on the loading. Um, it then goes back into the biscuit tins, 1930s, 1960s. Embargoed, neutral cutouts. We've got fused live, fused neutrals. Loop services, bottom and top. Um, modern services cutouts uh, in GRP enclosures, 68 or 100 amp versions. Again, look at that. I mean, why would they, why would a human being do that? I, I'm stunned that they've actually put that in. That just shows you whoever put this document together is evidently brain dead. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they've just put basically, a, oh no, hang on, what they've done, they've put an RCD main switch, rotary isolator, RCD and a circuit breaker. That must is that a PV the, maybe? It's a PV system on the isolator. Oh God. Yeah. So again, again, different types of methods and means of cutouts. Um, different configurations. You notice all these plastic, all of the earthing terminals are plastic now. Insulated, yeah. Yeah, they're all insulated. They're all insulated. And that's because there's reference to insulating anything which could become charged of energy. Which we're going to cover. Good wording there. Charged. That's uh, you know, live is charged, which means it yes. doesn't necessarily have a voltage on it. Could be zero volt, but it can have current flowing through it. And 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 HSG eighty five does does define mm. anything that has significant charge as live. Yes. 
So our earthing systems, you could, if you had a clamp meter and were able to measure energy on them, consider them live. BS seven six seven one has some catching up to do. Um, by the way, hang on a minute. What is that in the corner? Is that what I think? Let me just zoom in. Is that copyright Flameport Enterprises Limited? John, yep, feel I free to swear. Blatantly I've got the beep stolen. button on YouTube. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> so, so Energy Networks Association on behalf of my good friend John Ward. Shame on you. So yeah, this is all publicly available information, chaps, um, guys and girls, sorry. Um, but what it does do is it goes into quite a significant level of detail. So for those looking for that education and knowledge on cutouts, this is, you can Google it, you can get it on your phone, you can, you know, try and understand what's in these biscuit tins, you know, because mm. I had that on my house for many years, that biscuit tin type, um, and all the different configurations you get, the embargoed neutral cutouts, loop services there you go loop services in and out neighboring properties there's some really good knowledge and this is a great one high level processes to determining suitability of cow for additional load on the right hand side if it's metal bad condition 30s 60s nope it's embargo nope and if it's loop services nope so how many people have put um uh, uh an ev installation onto a loop service when this document says you shouldn't john did the ev course in any way tell us to look at the actual supply intake equipment assembly or is it just pme tncs tns did it ask us to look at any of those john sorry what was that i was uh, distracted you, you, you've just there. you've just done your uh, ev course did they ask you to look at the switch gear in the way that's just been described there as not to... in any detail the, the course was a bit uh, condensed shall we say it's a oh, okay affair. And one of those was obviously the uh, assessment and the uh, <laughs> condensed including your assessments clearly. yeah basically if it's the deal is if it's 60 amps or less including the ev charger then you can just go ahead and install it and if it's above that then you need to speak to the dno first so unless it's a very very low powered property um you're going to be speaking to the dno first because 60 amps they mind a typical ev charger is going to be 32 or 30 amps anyway that only leaves you 30 for the whole rest of the property so, yeah, yeah so in this, most cases, it's going to be over that 60. This yeah. says, John, if presented with the above types of cutout, the LCT device installer must assume that the cutout is unsuitable for additional load or that the fuse size in the cutout is 30 amp. In all cases, the installer must refer the matter to the DNO for an assessment to be carried out and possibly a cutout replacement. Yeah, the loop service is one. Basically, if you come across a loop service and they want an EV charger, then it's unfortunately game over in that regard because they're going to have to unloop it, which is going to mean probably a load of money spent in some part did, of it. Did the EV course tell you that? That was I don't think that was included. I kind of knew okay. that anyway. So, uh, you kind of knew that anyway. Well, then it's, it's, it's a spend <laughs> on the network that they're not going, they're not going to want to uh, pay out for someone is, who can uh, afford an EV car. That yeah. one is it's basically the 60 amps thing is mentioned, but so if you think about it, if you've got, if you're putting in a seven kilowatt charger, which is sort of 30 amps, the fact that you've only got 30 amps in total for everything else that's already in the property is not a lot. Mm -hmm. So you only need like one electric shower and there you go. So, you're yeah. over the 60. So, yeah. And also you need to find out what the rating of the main fuse is anyhow, because just because it says 100 amps on the label doesn't mean it's 100 amps inside. It could be who knows what. So... In, in most cases, you're going to have to contact the DNO anyway. Mm. So the other thing which Matt, was in the course is the fact sorry. that if you're putting one in, it's not necessarily just the loading on that individual property. Mm. So if you go to, say, a block of flats, you've got to consider like the total loading for that particular like local area. So if you go to a block of flats and six people want an EV car putting in, then individually per flat, it might well be you could get it under the 60. But ultimately, if you're putting like three or four in one individual location then it's contact the dno again because obviously it's a large amount of load you're actually adding onto the system so gotcha. yeah. so it'll, uh, it, it'll end up as you contact the dno first just to make sure anyway and then if you can go ahead well fine and if not they need to make alterations so i think i think you've nailed it john i think this is the trouble is stuff's getting more complex i'm just looking at the comments daniel said zappy load curtailment yeah i kind of i quite like the zappy bit of kit actually um 
the um was where was it um matt ralph has said loads of biscuit tins in stevenage harlow is filled with biscuit tins they are absolutely everywhere um they're a yeah they're a bit of a yeah they're a bit of a nuisance i had one in my hand quite some time um what else is uh, any other comments sorry i'm just reading through now one second somebody wants a reference for the document so it is called cut out rating guidance to ev uh, installers it's the march edition um it's there's it's lots and lots of information uh, about it's just finding it um and again um, all this is google 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 googleable do we um i mean some of you guys are from the discord we can drop some of these free ones into the discord can't we uh somebody in the comments i can't find it now asked what is yeah. discord because they don't know oh yeah richard corey it's a secret secret uh, it's just um it's just it's just like a it's kind of like a a forum kind of place um, if you click, um, if you go on my website, sparkninja.com, and then there's a Discord thing. You click that, and you get an invite, and you can just run it, and you create a little login. It's just like a forum, but it's different. Yeah, it's basically full of people who are really nice. It's, and it's, it's, where, it's where a lot of people in this chat hide and kind of tell us, you know, tell us what we should be talking the point, about in these the, things. The point being is, though, this is getting more and more complex. Yes. And and I think we as individuals are realizing it's more complex. There's more knowledge that needs to be produced. Cripes, just on, I mean, you could write a book on DNO intakes alone for electricians. You could write a book on, on diverted neutral currents, which is what we will, we will touch upon more um, in the next one of these webinars. Because I think it's worth covering on these webinars some more before and afters, re-going yes. over some of these bits. Um, going through this document, it would be really good, actually, if everyone watching this, go away and do some research, find some nuggets that you want discussed, and we'll then put it into a part two, and we'll have an open debate about it. Um, because I'm reading these documents, and I'm I'm blown away by some of the stuff I'm reading. I mean, um, let's see if I can... Oh. I've just mm -hmm. closed and you're right though it's a lot of information and what we can't do is just say here have all this information we need to obviously allow people to take the time and actually kind of go on so let me let me read something from bs7430 out to you um part 20 consumers electrical installations um two hazards may be present should an earth fault occur in an installation firstly voltages appear between conductive parts yep we know that they constitute a shock hazard um funnily enough was termed indirect shock we don't use that term anymore. Mm. We use basic and fault protection. Fault. Um, mm. The severity of any shock depends on other factors, type of current, AC or DC, the magnitude of these voltages and the time for they're allowed to persist. Secondly, the earth fault current may be of such magnitude and duration as to cause excessive temperature rising conductors through which it flows, thereby creating a fire hazard. Now, why just fault? because it's fairly evident, if you looked at the picture last week, the diverted neutral current issue, it's not fault, it's normal. Diverted neutral current is large levels of excessive um, earth or well, neutral current appearing on earth systems, which can cause temperature rise. That's in BS7430. Um, mm. So I'm reading that. Um, for anyone who else wants to know on the 13th of August, um, there was an energy uh, Scottish Power Networks guy who was involved on a low voltage jointing incident. He died, age 32. That's safety alerts on our Instagram. Um, there is one or two other bits if I can find it. No, I can't because my computer is all over the place, as per usual. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, as Daniel says, it's difficult to suddenly get a huge mass, you know, to digest this huge massive dump of information. Hard to know where to start. Um, it's the same for us, buddy. Uh, what we kind of do is we kind of binge on it and then we kind of go on with the things and we return to them. I mean, Paul's over the past couple of days kind of highlighted how he prints off highlights, he scans, and then he revisits. And um, it's pretty much the same. I mean, we've got so many documents and references. I'm trying to reorganize them all on my end because it's these shelves of, behind me so many. are just going to fill up with yeah. British standards. Um, that's all that's going to happen. Mm. They're just going to keep filling up um, and I'm just going to keep reading them so that I can have them actually accessible so mm. I can just turn around and grab them off the shelf. 
And as we've said in competence discussions, we're not supposed to memorize all this. We just need to nope. know the information God, is no. there and know how to access it when we need to. Yep. You know, the, the part of the journey, one of the first parts of the journey is knowing the standard exists. Hmm. If you know the standard exists, you're halfway there to winning. And that's key. Um, the rest of it is then understand the big words that we may not use every day. But I think it's technology that is being connected to aged infrastructure is causing multiple issues. Let's look at it. Definitely. Faulty white goods aren't fault. Surge protection, transient. So next week we're doing surge. Um, so surge protection is going to be an interesting one because we're going to talk about strikes and strokes. Um, we're going to go through um, some pictures. If anyone's got any pictures of any good SPD installations that are pants, please send them because we're going to kind of reverse engineer the whole surge protection argument um, rather than doing it the way the regs wants us to do it. And Kirsty will be joining us for that. Um, mm -hmm. And she won't see. And it's a good idea, though, because it allows us to reapply the way the regs want us to think about it. Yeah. If we try to think about things differently, it helps us to understand what it wants us to do. Yes. Absolutely. It's just trying to take things from different angles. Mm -hmm. um, is there any thoughts or feelings? There are or, three sorry, questions in the Q&A. Okay. okay, so Dave Betteridge just says, seeing a few pics here where bending radius or more of a coil, you know, your little uh, coils that you love, you know, pigtails. Is there a reg or a standard that doesn't allow such practice? He's thinking things like thermal spots or inductive effects. Um, I know you really don't like these little coils that you get in boards with the main. Oh, the helixes. Things. Yeah, the helixes. helixes are just awful. Pigtails, Can you helixes. think of any standard or any criterion that you could refer to that that would be detrimental to? Um, you know, it, okay. if you were to code it JS, just shit, that's great. No, but you no, I would, I would talk about the bending radius of conductors. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Christ, I can't remember where that is now. Hang on. Yeah, this is the thing where you've got like your you have like bonding conductor and someone's wrapped it around a broom handle first, haven't they? And mm -hmm. stuck it into the terminal. We used to always do that though, because uh, remember um, cage bonding and supplementary bonding, we'd get the old hammer that was fine. Or that was fine if you wanted to do that, but mm. the only time I ever was taught um, to have that thing against vibration. Yeah. That was basically it. It was vibration and motors, and that was the only thing in 20 years ago. Now, why you would put these helixes in, I don't all these pigtails We in. have other cable types now. You know, we have other options now, don't we? It's a waste. Um, I will dig out the reg numbers and bits and bobs and the argument for it for when we do the second part of the DNO, but good challenge because mm -hmm. there is regs in it and it is it is all to do with bending radius of conductors. Um, but yeah, and it's, to be honest with you, I would just use good workmanship materials, 13411 or whatever yeah. it is. Usual yeah. uh, one that everyone forgets. Usual one everyone forgets. <laughs> good workmanship and materials. But the, how do you define that? Building regulation 7 which very clear on good workmanship materials, straight, square, level, flum, mm. lush, yeah. in line of manufacturers agreement. You know, the other one um, from Simon Goodship is it's it's kind of along the same lines. It's about bending radius. So we've got tails entering the consumer unit. And again, yeah, bending radius does matter. And if you check with the actual cable manufacturers, they'll tell you what the minimum is. And it's normally yeah. so many if, diameters of the cable. Exactly. The manufacturers will give you specifications about that. Uh, wine regulations gives you things under wiring systems where you've got risks of impact. And it will mention things like tension, compression, and things like that. And if the Going connections... Upon conductors. You know, strain, yeah. Well, the um, fact of the matter is there's a reg for you must follow manufacturer's instructions. That includes cable ones. Cable manufacturers okay. will say to you there's a bending radius for... Um, external diameter and internal core diameter, if it is a, like an armoured and stuff. Um, I can't remember them off the top of my head. I'm ashamed to say it being 10 o'clock at night, um, which, well, yeah, awful of me. I used to know this off the top of my head. Um, but, yeah, so there is manufacturer's guidance. That manufacturer's guidance is a breach of the manufacturer's guidance reg. Never mind the good workmanship materials. Never mind the strain placed upon conductors regulation. So there's three regs straight away that those meter tails i can't stand when i look at a, a, a consuming it online the first thing i do on rate my board is look at the bending radius and amount of people who bring tails in the bottom round the back of the main switch and complete horseshoe up mm -hmm. straight away i think to myself if i got the manufacturer's data for the bending radius of those cables and just dropped a line down the middle and measured across i guarantee you i'd be in breach of that bending It'd radius be too sharp of course it would be too sharp yeah. You do, yeah. The rule for bending radius of cables was no horseshoes. You never do a horseshoe on a cable, ever. And yet most people do. Um, it was something I always wanted to do a, a webinar on, but 
I just never got the time to do all the research behind it. To be well, honest, there's many, was... many, many things, isn't it? Um, somebody in the chat has said, can I have an E5 sticker? What, one of them ones, you mean? Quite nice, aren't they? Um, yes, you can. Um, just ask and wait a very long time because we have, <laughs> I've got like 900 emails in my email box now. Um, in, Liam, in <coughs> Liam Neeson's voice, please, can you say strokes are worse than strikes? No. <clears throat> I can't do it. It's 10 o'clock. I will do on the next one, okay? <laughs> oh, God, it's definitely getting late, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Um, what, what does Dean do about an E5 sticker? Where does he then send an address to? Uh, info at e5group.org.uk. Okay. And please, please, please include an address, because I'm not a mind reader. I have sent probably 2,500 emails to people saying, hello, I'm not a mind reader. Please, can I have an address? Yeah. Um, which would be nice. So yes, I can send you. Would, what one would you like? Would you like the small reflective one for your eggs books, or the clear ones, or the larger ones? We have every type. Yeah. So let us know. Uh, any other questions? Uh, David has said, wondering on the second part, or maybe now up to you as it's late. Put PNB examples would be great to an understanding of. So examples of PNB. Yes. So. The reason why we said on social media this was going to be 10 hours is because um, if we did examples of PMB, we would then have all the diagrams and all the schematics and everything else. And I'll tell you what we'll do for the next one. Rather than at the start, have the earth clamps and all the rest of it. And nine five, we will put all of the schematics and we will dig out photos of what a PMB connection should look like. And we'll do some more where we um, show you an intake and let you guess and you will guess wrong. Um, but it will kind of add more to this debate of these DNOs are quite complex and they don't always follow their own rules. I think so. what's, what's obviously evident, especially from tonight's webinar, is there's so much information available, yet we haven't been shown it or we haven't been educated into where to find it, yet we're now being, ex ex we're being asked to express our, it, our, um, our opinions on the condition of the installation with no real understanding on what their standards are and that is the pme supply cable that goes into most houses nowadays that's it that aluminium core with that copper mm -hmm. external it's tiny when you think about it the you only thing don't. reliable in that cable is the live the out the outer is the neutral and earth and you can see now why neutral currents may end up getting lost onto and diverted diverted heaven forbid uh, through the gas meter Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, but on a serious note, these webinars are to try and help expand your knowledge and us to share our knowledge. If it's been helpful, thank you very much for watching. And we will do definitely do a follow up on this one because there's a lot more to go, a lot more yes. knowledge to share. We would like you guys watching this to share your knowledge of us. Uh, info at e5group.org.uk um, because this is about us as a group yeah. debating or, and talking. Or in the Discord where you can talk to each other about it. Bloody well. self-indulgence, Dave. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, hang on. What's that? Of the DNOs, it's just coiling the cable for PME. Um, is there a step potential voltage from not being deep enough? Yeah, there could be, depending on how yeah. deep it was and if that was connected at the time. So, I'm pretty sure I've got some pictures of recent torpedoes where they've just got little bits of spray. I've seen it where they've out. just put the thing on top of it. You know. Yeah. It's, normally it's, they go under to, yeah. to actually keep it level while they're doing it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like yeah a I mean, platform. Where you've got an electrode. If there's, if it's in the ground and there's obviously a fault there and the current's flowing, then yeah, you could have a step potential from that to wherever it happens to be. So. Um, just to let everyone know, next Wednesday is going to be slightly different. Although it's called EICR coding SPDs, twenty percent of it's going to be coding. The rest of yep. it is going to be reverse engineering surge protection. Okay, Which is so really what you want to know, to. though. You want it's to what understand we need to know. that. Yeah, it's what we want to know. Is we about know the regs. Surge protection. Let's, let's take everything yep. from it there and let's go backwards and see if we come up with a different mm. result. We'll do some coding for fun because, uh, yeah. you know, there, there are some serious situations where we may need to code with the um, absence or presence of an, of an SPD. But a lot of the time, uh, Kirsty's coming along will be to actually gain, you know, hugely in, in uh, stepping backwards with this. Yeah, and um, there is, a little, 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 I think it's fair to say, there is future webinars we want to do and desperately want to do, but um, there's certain restrictions on knowledge that we can share in this. I think we've pushed boundaries enough as it, as it was. 
Yes. But there is lots more we want to tell you, and we're not legally allowed to tell you as of yet. Uh, but the minute we do, we will blow your socks off later on this year, I think it's fair to say. Um, but this, I think it's also fair to say, is going to somehow have to change the way we operate, or at least the regulations or the information. Because let's be perfect, frank, the ECA, the NIC, NAPIT, if they're not putting this knowledge out there, let's put it out there for ourselves. Yes. It's free. It's public. We should be getting told what we're paying our money for. Yeah. Just a thought. Yeah, um, I mean, and at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff is used for their own kind of gain, books, publications, all this stuff. There's so much stuff available for free. Just We just don't know where it is. It is, indeed. Other than that, thank you. Sorry for being so long. Please don't abuse us down below. <laughs> Please be nice. Uh, DW, yeah. you're a legend. Cheers, John. David. Bye, mate. Awesome um, as always. All right, everyone in chat, thank you for coming along. I'm going to hit the end button unless there's anything else you guys wanted to quickly say. Hopefully not, because we've gone with you on three hours. Peace and love. All right. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.